And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have my good brother here in the temple, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadari Enterprises, which is ra which is rapidly opening its opening its mech design division. Last I last I heard, <laughs> and the and the bane of my fucking existence, good brother Xanatrix. This one, this one is one that I had that I had in the back burner for a few weeks, but given recent events, I think I think I I think we have an ideal time for th for this particular one, because as some of you know, I for the longest time have been a fan of Warhammer Fantasy and Warhammer 40k. I say, but the key word here is was for one simple reason. GW being GW, and I have, and if, in recent events, which we have, which we will get into, a lot of people have been venturing away, much in the same way that people have been venturing away from other major franchises that were seen as un, that were seen as unkillable for the longest time. Because this week's topic is from Space Marines to Mech Warriors, exploring the 40k Exodus. So. <sighs> Before we, now, I want I want to make perfectly clear on on one thing. GW is a company that has volumes of pages in the Book of Grudges. Despite my, despite how much I love this, despite how much I love the setting, it is a classic case, much like much like Warhammer, where you have good where you have good settings and good material and all and all that being handled by bad people. Because it's a case where. Uh, we basically have to separate how much we hate a shitbag company um, from how much we love what they've created. And um, I think I think bef before we get before we get into recent events, oh boy, when we get into that, um, we do need to set the stage about what about why we about for those for those unaware about why we have our particular issues with Games Workshop even before. What's happened in the last few months? Do we start with uh, inflated model prices over the last twenty-five years, or Actually, let, let's start? Let's start all the way back with the time they sued Bl the time they tried suing Blizzard. Oh, well, I mean, back when Blizzard was good, yeah, okay, good. When they tried suing Blizzard after they failed to. Uh, to agree on a contract between uh, between them for their for their Warcraft and, and Starcraft games, and mm -hmm. originally they they had partnered with, or were going to partner with Blizzard to create the video games, but they couldn't come to terms. So uh, Blizzard made everything legally distinct. <laughs> Literally, that's what they did. Yeah, and made their game. Specifically, it was StarCraft they started with, because Warcraft was before their partnership, wasn't it? As far as as far as I recall, the part the partnership was originally attempted with Warcraft because um, around that around that time, Games Workshop was tooling about with trying to bring um, Warham bring Warhammer Fantasy into video game into video game form. Um, okay, it's, had... it's been a while since I actually reviewed that stuff. It's just what I consider the ba the basic foundation that. At this point, most anyone who's involved with GW should know. Yeah, even even so, it's understandable that that's a bit of a blur because of the fact that the deve the development time between Warcraft and Star and Starcraft is a bit of a con is a bit of a continuum. Yeah, and they they were all kind of developed in a mishmash. Mm -hmm. Especially since especially and that's not even getting into the whole Blizzard North situation that was developing Diablo around the same span of time. Yeah. And but but essentially after after Blizzard who had made most of the game um I guess th th they had made most of the game and then GW disagreed with like a lot of elements and basically wanted to scrap and start over from what I remember. Which if that's the case you should have said something sooner. Yeah, and and so you know Blizzard and GW were like, yeah, this isn't going to work out. And uh Mostly Blizzard, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. 
we we don't have the exact specifics anymore. I think I could probably go look it up, but I'm not Flutter. Um, <clears throat> the uh, the the fact that they released Warcraft and Starcraft, and the fact that those games are to this day beloved and known icons of gaming culture at this point, shows that despite the fact that GW is like this is our shit and you've stolen it, um. Blizzard got to go, no, legally distinct, see? Mm -hmm. And keep it. <laughs> of course, if GW is going to bitch about uh, cribbing notes, um, maybe they should look in the mirror. Um, that's, that's, something, that's something else that is, 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 very, is very funny. When you, when you look at a lot of, a lot of their, a lot of their early stuff, when Warhammer was just a collection of ideas in, the, in their magazines. And there are there is a lot of material that is blatantly cribbed from other media, whether it be whether it be whether it be the Eternal Champion meta series, whether it be whether it be Lord of the Rings, whether whether it be um, whether it be do whether it be Dune, whether, yep, whether moving. it be Starship Troopers, whether yeah. it be Alien, and unlike 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 some unlike some people who proclaim to be purists, <coughs> Razor Fist. I am I am not one of those kind of people who who will who will write something off simply because it ri something because it ripped off um, from an, from another work. That's not how I operate. However, when you when you do that kind of thing and then you and then you decide to cry d decide to cry foul at other people, that's when you end up crossing the line. And when it comes to there's oh yeah I, for, I forgot one other thing the reason why their orcs have a k is because they is because they tried to trademark that but um good old genericide ended ended up ended up force ended up um not allowing them to do that because they want they wanted to own orcs um and well can't can't really can't really do that when the when the word is so ancient <laughs> He's trying to keep orcs to themselves. That's not very orky. <laughs> we orcs are loot orcs back from them. <laughs> How do you loot orcs from orcs? Oh no! Figure it out. <laughs> Used a <your> smart one. <laughs> <sighs> but there, there has been a there has been a long history of the, of them getting of them getting um su getting so happy. Regard, regarding regarding other people using the other people using the IP in one form or another, and I remember I remember growing I remember um growing up there uh, before when I fi when I finally got into um Warhammer um the result even before that there was always this air there was always this weird air of of the of this for, of this forbidden area when it came to Warhammer and, and Warhammer 40k especially in the 90s. I'd imagine that some of that was due to the fact that it that it was a U, that it was a UK property, and thus trying to even get the stuff would be difficult. I um, think the the other part was um, mini minis, specifically uh, miniature war games, as per you know Warhammer Fantasy and and Warhammer Forty K. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as I was aware, they weren't prevalent amongst younger audiences. They were prevalent within geek culture. But much older people, I'd usually see playing them. The mini people, the, mini wa the miniature wargaming scene is la is largely a college age venture. Yeah, yeah. I, I, ironically, I actually got into Warhammer 40k in middle school. Um, let me. <laughs> I do have to tell the story actually because it is fucking hilarious. Um, the my friend who introduced me to it, and I haven't talked to him in forever. I hope he's doing well. Um, he, he introduced me to it during homeroom in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. He had brought in his dark Eldar codex and, uh, and his Eldar codex, both of them. He had like seven armies. Um, this is third edition. Uh, and the, uh, most surprising part of all, this kid and his family devout super Christians. <laughs> I don't know. And, they, and he was allowed to have all of this. 
I was like, oh, thank you. Like, there were times where they wouldn't let him watch certain movies and stuff because of the devil. Yeah. <laughs> but they allowed him to have Warhammer 40k. Specifically things like Dark Eldar and Chaos Marines. <laughs> Look, real religious pa religious parents and and sports parents will be will continue to be my whipping boy until i'm dead he was a cool kid uh his 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 look on religion was much more measured than his parents um that tends and to be he, how it goes yeah and of course he understood that the games are nothing but fiction and i think that's how he managed to convince his parents actually that none of this is real so none of it is an affront to God. <laughs> Which uh, but, the fact the fact that the fact that they needed that the fact that they needed that much convincing doesn't exactly um, <laughs> paint them in the best light. But it, I just found it so ironically delicious that it was a Christian kid with a dark Eldar and Eldar Codex who introduced me to forty k. Now, I um. I for for me my for me my introduction to um my introduction to my introduction to 40k was the was a old old ass version of the Space Hulk board game. Oh Jesus. Um and I should I should note this might this might be a minor flex but the limited but that limited 3rd edition version of the Space Hulk board game I ha I have um on my shelf. Oh, nice! Always nice to have cool collectibles. Mm -hmm. And space, Hulk, and um, space Hulk is a is a is a pretty good board game, all th all things considered. There are some arguments about it being a little bit too skewed in favor of the Gene Stealers, but um, when you, but when you consider how cu how customizable maps are, because it because it's a bunch because it's a bunch of interconnected tiles, um, it's easy to work around that issue. My other argument is when isn't when aren't the uh, odds skewed in favor of gene stealers? <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, there's always been a bit of author itis in that in that regard. But when but um and I'd I'd be I'd be remiss if I did if I didn't point out some of the um some some of the PC games that had some rather infamous FMVs. <laughs> Hmm. Can't imagine which those would be. No, nope, not at all. Choose your words with exceptional care. <laughs> what if I choose no words at all? Well, it's a commissar, so then he'd probably shoot you. Mm-hmm. I know. Um. But. And of course, of course, when of course when it came to um when it came to fantasy, um. Arguably that arguably that wasn't much better because my introduction to that was Shadow of the Horned Rat, which repeatedly kicked my ass. It is one of the har is one of the hardest um, strategy games I've played, simply because of how that game really starves you of resources. Yeah, I'll I'll be honest. When it came to Warhammer Fantasy, I I wasn't as involved or enthralled by the lore as I was by 40k. Which um, I'm not surprised, but I'm not surprised by that because it's an easier. It's an, because um, space marine because stuff because space cru space knights in on a, on a galactic crusade is going to be an e is going to be an easier is going to be an easier sell than gr than gr than grim dark fantasy, especially especially at the a the age when we were growing up, you know, post you know post Star Wars shit. Well, I mean, but I also had already read the Lord of the Rings novels by that point, and a lot of what Warhammer fantasy felt like to me at that point was someone trying to turn Tolkien's works into his adventures, and I use the word adventures loosely, in World War I. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, we just took Tolkien and made it his, and we took the Lord of the Rings and made it Fantasy World War One. There you go. I'm like, but that's 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 not what I want. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the funny thing is, Fantasy World War One doesn't sound like a terrible idea. It doesn't, and we have that. It's named Yojo Senki, and it's about magical girls shooting down other people with magic. Mm 
<laughs> not exactly. And for any, not exactly the route that I that I would have gone personally, but I'll take it. Uh, I mean, Tanya the Evil is fucking fantastic, so I'm going to plug it wherever I can. Yeah. Plus, um, <coughs> plus it's it's comforting to ha it's comforting to have an anime that has the same policy that we do about commies. <laughs> we hate wasting human resources, but commies are not human. Shoot every one of them. That was that was what that speech boiled down to. Mm -hmm. uh, regardless, um, I think my primary issue with uh, with Warhammer Fantasy is the same issue I have with a lot of fantasy shonen anime that aren't that don't have some sort of good twist on them. Um, it's too. I feel like it's too formulaic. Even even with how grim and dark and nasty. Warhammer fantasy is you think, the you form. Think the, you think it's sticking too much to the um, to the to the Bible, not the literal not, Bible, but um, but in terms of sticking too closely to cer to certain motifs. Parts of it are, yeah. Parts of it really feel I can predict them well in advance, and that's not to say that I can't do that with 40k either. But 40k does a good job of dressing them up in a way that feels like even though you know the twist finding out how you got there is is fun would you say would you say that in in that regard um something like say the eldar would be a good example of of that kind of dressing yeah are the are the eldar could you are the are the eldar referred to as space elves yes yes although once you actually dig into them, I'd say I'd say the I'd say Craft World Eldar are more akin to space gypsies. I mean, there are plenty of fantasy worlds where elves are treated like gypsies too. So whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's but um, including I, the own including our own version of heavens and heresies that we've created. Yeah, but get the knife ears out of my wood. <laughs> but to be to be fair. I would I would say I would say that particular thing is less of a war, Warhammer fantasy problem and more of a more of a problem with um with pe with people with a very backwards idea that people have regarding fantasy fiction as a whole. And this is something that I've talked about before when I've talked about the Tolkien melting pot. Yes. Now, once again as I've said in the past, I want to make explicitly clear, I have nothing against the works of J.R.R. Tolkien. I've en I've enjoyed I've enjoyed his works. I've enjo I've enjoyed the material that's come off of it. Um, in, in, I've in I've enjoyed the influence that it has on that it's had on that's had on music. I mean, Nightfall and Middle Earth. Anyone? Exactly. What I resent, however, is the idea that I have to take this particular monolith of fantasy fiction and use that as the and use that as the basis. In the same way, I resent the idea that. The search, a the search action style of Castlevania has to be the way a Castlevania game has to work. Different and by paths, but same search thing. action people, what he means is what most people commonly call a Metroidvania. Metroidvania. Yeah. I don't. I don't hate. I don't. In fact, in fact, as I as I mentioned to you in the past, one of the reasons that I fell in love with Exalted was they went out of their way to avoid that particular angle. Yeah, and I'm and as you know, I'm a fantastically huge fan of Exalted and its fantasy world. Yeah, <laughs> Exalted, the L five R, and the uh, and the like stuck out stuck out to me because of the fact that they didn't fall that they didn't follow this motif. And granted, um. War, Warhammer Fantasy was try was supposed is supposedly trying to lean more in, in, into fantasy fantasy Germany or or um and more specifically Holy Roman Empire um era, but but old but certain old habits still die hard regard regarding regarding various race regarding various um races. Mm -hmm. Um, now getting getting the Getting that, getting all that aside, moving moving past that, there. Mm. Then we have we have to we have to get back on the rails and discuss some of the um some of the sins, and the reason the reason why we brought up um our histories when it comes to fantasy and 40k because 
we wanted to we want to make clear that the issues that have happened over the last six months are not new things. It's just it's just that we've had a long stretch of G, of GW not fucking up, and and now people are realizing how bad of a company that they actually are. It's it's but, not so much long stretches of GW not fucking up. It's long stretches of GW not fucking up any more than they usually do. Mm -hmm. Because, as I said, as I as I alluded to at the very beginning when we wanted to go into sins, uh, inflating model prices that's that, that's been a problem for forever. That is to the point to the point where it's consi to the point where it's almost a yearly tradition that every year they up the price up they up the price of models to to a certain degree. But I'd I'd say I'd say that's one half I'd say that's one half of the issue when it comes to that particular sin. The other half is the way that they stronghold um, retailers, mm -hmm. both both phys both physical retailers as as in as in your FLGS or friendly local game store, and especially online retailers. Exactly. Now there there are two things that they do with um online re with online retailers. That um I find particularly egregious, especially when nobody else does this. One, yeah, we we despise them. One, you are not allowed to show any photos of the of um Games Workshop products on your on your store, which makes no fucking sense from a marketing perspective. Zero. Un Apparently, apparently, unless you're Amazon or something, that's probably because G, that's probably because GW doesn't have the money to try and strong arm Amazon. Um, well, and and the fact that I think Amazon requires at least one photograph included with almost every entry, right? Yeah. So, I guess you could get away with saying you can you can use this promotional picture of the box, mm -hmm. and that would fulfill that need. But, but if you're if you're not Amazon, all you get is all you get is a glorified spreadsheet that looks like the mail to order things that we had as kids that were in the magazines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here, order your box your boxes of us uh, of a six pack Space Marine squad. Well, what does it look like? Doesn't matter. Order it, kid. The other the other factor is it involves um pr involves pr involves promos. You are not allowed to offer to offer any discount more than fifteen percent. The num the numbers might have changed, but the f but the fact but the whole the whole strong arming what they can off what they can offer promotional discounts on, or or clearance discounts or the like, is is something that I do not abide. What um, what's the most common apologist argument you've heard in favor of these strong arm tactics? Um, I'd say, I'd say, I'd say the, I'd say the, I'd say the common thing is that they, is that they don't want, they don't want people going to, now usually, usually I, I try and avoid apologists because, because, um, it's, uh, because it's rude, it's rude and in poor form to mock the disabled. <laughs> but, what, but we're not what, mocking, we're mocking arguments, we're not mocking them. Well, the pr the problem is a lot of a lot of them take a lot of them take the shit per take the shit per take the shit personally, or or are the are akin, akin to akin to you saying um that you that you that you don't like a, that you don't like a Netflix series, and then you get and then you get an essay long response <laughs> to the point where it may as well be the embodiment of the lefty meme. But uh. the but the. Especially, especially these days, if you say that you don't like an MCU movie, then then these stands really come out, and I'm like, get a hobby. toy Jack. Soy yeah. Jack is real for a reason. Get a fucking hobby, people. Like I said, Soy Jack is real for a reason. And um, I um, allergies notwithstanding, I cannot endorse a soy based diet. <laughs> I prefer I prefer I prefer my protein and and things that aren't going to fuck over the environment. Oh, I prefer my protein and things that taste better than salt. But getting getting back on getting back on the rails, the argument that I do that I often heard is that is that they is that they want they want more they want more direct they want more direct buys because. Now this particular argument I had I had heard when there was the whole when there was the whole thing about how much 
damage the used game policy that GameStop has was was to the industry. Mm-hmm. You know, and that and that in and that um with that with that particular thing, the actual develop the actual developers or publishers are get, are getting a pittance um, when you bu- when you buy used as opposed to new. And I'm not well, the de- developers and publishers aren't getting anything at all. Mm-hmm. And a used game doesn't. Uh, they already got their money when the when the game was purchased new. Mm-hmm. Um. And when and as, when it comes to when it comes to that whole arc, that was the cl- that was the closest thing to an apologist argument I heard about this. Most of the time, especially when mini war gaming shut down because because of these policies, um, most apologists don't even bring the, don't even bring this kind of thing up, or they or they insult me. Which in that case, yeah, bye, bitch. Yep. Um, the most common apologist uh, argument I heard in the past was that uh, going over, specifically going with the sales prices, mm-hmm. was that if they went over fifteen percent, it would be stealing from GW. I'm like, N- no, that's that, that's not how resale works. Um, whoever whoever is reselling this stuff, they've already paid GW for these models. And then, of course, the inevitable follow-up was like, "But yeah, but that's at menu at MSRP at, or at warehouse prices or anything like that. That's not at shelf prices." I'm like, "Yes." Do you know what MSRP means? <laughs> yes, I know. I, no, I'm, I'm I know. Re- I'm referring to I'm referring to that person. Oh, I know. But the, you know, they get they get them at such low prices comparatively. I'm like, yeah, but it's guaranteed money. And it's still more; it's still enough to offset creation and still have profit. So what you're saying is that no matter what, Games Workshop should have an advantage and m- even more money than these people selling these models. You're stupid. <laughs> you're real stupid. Mm-hmm. And it's like they don't understand market economics, prob- which I wouldn't be surprised. Half of them are communists. Um. Probably, probably not, or um, or the or the kind of per- the kind of people who believe in magic, or in, or the kind of people in the '90s believe that believe that having a first issue of some random no-name comic actually was going to mean something in ten years. And then it never did. Yeah, don't think I don't think I forgot when that when when that when that whole th- when that whole thing went down when that whole thing went down when. Remember, remember during the speculator bubble when I was when everybody was like, "This first issue is a collector's item." Is it now? It's a collector's item worth how much these days? Less than it was when you purchased it. Can you tell me how that's collector? Mm-hmm. Um. And in the same in in that in that same in that same vein, the uh, it's the. The issue, the issue that I always had with that whole with that whole discount thing is, well, for one, I feel I feel like um, what it, what a sto- what a what a particular retailer wants to wants to offer as a discount or offer as clearance should not be any business of um of a, of the of the company providing the providing those materials. That's very true. Mm-hmm. Um, because as as I as I stated in my example just now. GW's already got their money. Yeah. They already got their money. What they're trying to do is double dip. They want to make sure that none of the competitors that are retailers, because that goes, don't get, don't get me wrong. Technically, retailers are a competitor to your main, if you have your own main outlet. Mm -hmm. Uh, And GW absolutely does have its own main outlet. Having, having a friendly local game store that sells your minis is still competition for your main store where you're charging an arm and a leg and you want to get money from both ends except that so that main, that main store is all is all the is all the way out in the uk so so the, the so the push to the push to strong arm people in um in in another in other countries never made any sense to me um they wanted more people to order through the magazines or order online when it became an internet uh, shop. And but what I what I find especially telling is that there is no precedent for the, for this for 
for this kind of behavior. You you don't see you never saw this in the direct market when it came to comic books. You sure as hell don't see this when it comes to other miniatures companies. Yeah. I think the the worst part is that uh I think people just went along with it for no reason. Um I think I think for the longest time people people went al- people went along with it because of the strength of because of the strength of the brand. The whole the whole the whole brand the whole um brand lo- the whole brand loyalty um in mo- in modern in modern nomenclature the um stand culture I guess I guess would be apropos. Um also also um it's I'd say it's I'd say it's kind of like how we've how you and I have seen people who clearly have issues with the way D and D works but aren't willing to jump to anything else because that's what everyone else plays. Or we saw I saw yeah. this again with I saw this similarly with magic or with or with Pokemon or the like. That um yeah. which um, which is a um and I can understand that to a point, but at what but at but at a certain level it stops feeling like an explanation and starts feeling like an excuse. Um, it's just if it, it's the sunk cost fallacy, is what it is. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely the sunk cost fallacy. And I might be a little bit biased because because I was somebody who went out of my way to help teach people a bunch of different games, going all the way back to my days in grade school. Yeah, I wish I wish people had paid attention when I did that, but you know, um, <sighs> tiny towns. I wasn't I I was in a I was in a moder I was in a moderately sized town but I I get the fe- I get the feeling that I that I had a bit of an unfair adv- I had a bit of an unfair advantage sh- by sheer force of personality cuz you're black Fuck you <laughs> <laughs> You knew that was coming Oh I knew I knew it was coming and still fuck you <laughs> But but that's one. That's one of the. That's one of the major. That's one of the major issues. Then, um, there's then there's been issues of um, balancing, where the, where there have been there have been certain armies that have that have been that that have gotten far more attention than others. Six Marines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know what that was. You really need to get that looked at. Yeah, I think I might need to see my doctor. Yeah, I think I think you might need to take some Benadryl for a bullshit allergy. <sighs> ah, shit! Nothing's open. I'll have to walk down to the Seven Eleven later and get <laughs> some Benadryl for that. <laughs> but the, that's one. That's one of the more egregious examples. But then, then there, then there were the there was that um there was that time there was that time when they really wanted to push airborne <laughs> units and wanted to push them on every army, even if it didn't make any damn sense. Um, and then there was the time they forgot the Sisters of Battle existed for five editions. Oh yeah, where the... and I, and I distinctly remember the I distinctly remember around that time there there were people asking why aren't there female Space Marines? Um, even though a the lore has made the lore for years has made very clear why that's the case because of the whole gene seed thing, and b if you um. You're, you should you should instead be you should instead be writing the GW proclaim proclaiming that you want sisters of battle. Oh wait, that would involve act, that would involve actual work. That's why they didn't do it. Instead, they brought up Mathermian argument, which is still fucking bullshit. Yeah. But, but um. Put but put, um one mi- one minor thing that I fe- I feel I need to bring up. Was the incident involving involving a book called Spots the Space Marine? This is this was this was a one off. This was a light one off book that had absolutely nothing to do with to do with Warhammer 40k, and yet Games Workshop sued over the name Space Marine. Now the suit, yeah. the suit didn't go anywhere, but. Keep but like, keep that particular line of thinking in the back of your mind for what's to come. So, I, I would actually like to point out: Do you want? Do you guys want to know exactly how not uh, how this has literally nothing to do with anything? Let's go having let's to go do with forty k. Let's go over that to make clear how how com- how um, complete left field this was. 
first, just to point out, Amazon still has this listed. So obviously, the, this, as we said, the, uh, the suit went nowhere. But here is the Amazon blurb about this book. Spots the Space Marine, Defense of the Fiddler. Pollyanna meets starship troopers in this fast screenplay-like novel about a 30-something marine private called out of retirement to join the war against the crabs. But shattered morale is the least of her company's problems, and their survival may hinge on an unlikely friendship forged between an alien weapons designer and a mother-turned-warrior. Told in a terse, script-like format, this is the first book in the series, yes it is a series, and is followed by the epilogue short, Spots the Space Marine Letters. Pollyanna meets Starship Troopers. What? <laughs> Is this a fucking fever dream? <laughs> as much of a fever dream as it may be, um, the point the point that the point that we're trying to hammer home with this is that it is is that there is no, there is the only thing that you can really go that you can really go with is is the is it is it having the name Space Marine. And I think that's uh, that's exemplified in this top review that I found from 2015. Uh, five stars. Just a Stardis has met its match. Uh, I first got interested in spots after reading a Cracked article uh, back when Cracked wasn't woke as shit. As a 40k Space Marine fan, hearing that Games Workshop was suing Mrs. Hogarth, the author, under the mistaken idea that they owned the whole concept of people who are a fighting force on ships who are not sailors, but instead of the, these people being on water ships, they are now on spaceships. That is the most convoluted way to say space marine. I love it. <laughs> um, I, I, and he then says, I found this idea laughable, and when I heard that Games Workshop had in fact lost its case, I thought, hmm, the Tyranids failed to eat them, the Tau failed to convince them of the greater good, the Orcs can't crush them, the Eldar, who think of humans as monkeys, get routinely spanked by them, and Chaos only netted a few. Let's see this force that sent the Adeptus Astartes running to hide behind the Golden Throne and Big Daddy Emperor of Mankind. And then, uh, and then he gives an actual review of the book right after that, saying that it had all the action a 40k fan could want, and was written in a way... Um, that was refreshing because he hadn't seen outside of, you know, playwrights and movie scripts. Mm -hmm. um, and then he was also surprised at how uh, how well the book portrays being deployed because he had been in Iraq in, 29, in, 20, in 2009. Mm -hmm. and, and then, he, and then he, he said, when I found out she had never, the, that the author had never been in the military, I was quite shocked. So, a as you can see, People laughed at Games Workshop for this loss, eh, and and it and right and rightfully so. Mostly, mostly because um, people will people will always have a pre a predilection to to stand up for to stand up for the little guy. It's just it's just a um, it's just a culture it's just a cultural thing. Um. Now with that with that in with that in mind. The ne then we then we for a while we had a we had a brief period of um of qu of quiet in re in regards to in regards to just ma just um more egregious bullshit and yeah it was it was all of Games Workshop's normal fuck ups that everybody grumbles about all the time mm -hmm. and in the process of in the process of this we had. We had pe we had people um, we had we started to see a ri a rising um, a rising amount of community created content. This was this was when we were starting to see more and more people do say um, lore videos, such as pe such as people like Ar such as people like Arch or Lutane 09 or Grimdark Narrator. We would. This is also we, when we saw the advent of a uh, our favorite, Brava Alpha Busa with his a. Uh... If the emperor had a text-to-speech device, I'd say I'd say the earliest the earliest inc the earliest incarnation that I saw of this particular um, this particular kind of fan work goes all the way back to a YouTube user called Big Dick Cheney, who had <laughs> these dramatic retellings of um, of 
Dawn of Warhammer 40k Dawn of War one one and um two and two along with their uh, respective DLCs. Um, typically you typically using using instead of using the default soundtrack, which is just kind of eh, he used he used diff he used different tracks from ranging from star ranging from Star Wars, Gundam, even Wolf's Reign in one in one particular infamous instance. I remember that. Um, and that was it, hilarious. <laughs> and it and it actually worked. Um, of course, then then we'd start to see more and more when it came to um, lore dis lore discussion, which was a way for people to get into the universe without necessarily having to get into the games. And after that, we started to see fan animations. Um, things things like things like Hell's Reach, things like um, things. Things like Astartes, which, which, for those of you on the Discord server, you may recall, I did. We did a watch through of that on my birthday. Yep. We had, we had, th we, and of course the creme de la creme on the on this partic on this particular thing, as almost as a perfect companion to the insanity that is one d four chan, one of the one of the great one of the greatest shit posting wikis of all time, if not the greatest. If the emperor had a text to speech device. <sighs> I am so sad for Alpha Busa and the team mm -hmm. because of recent events. But we'll get to that. Yeah. And <laughs> it should be noted that if the emperor had a text to speech device was was to Warhammer 40k what um what Dragon Ball Z what Dragon what Team Four Star and Dragon Ball Z abridged was to Weebs. It's essentially. Have you ever read a crack fic? Anybody? This is a crack fic. Mm -hmm. it, did, did, did you don't write it? It started out as Alpha Boost and friends wanting to find funny ways to explain lore and lore inconsistencies, and then it grew a plot. Organically, in fact, mm -hmm. he found it in the fridge one day. <laughs> uh, Almost uh, almost like that one episode of uh, Cowboy Beep. Uh... <clears throat> Don't leave things but... in the fridge. <laughs> Eventually they get a life of their own. Mm -hmm. But it was... It, it's a crack fic, outright. It, it's, it's cracked to hell and back. To the point that they've started... That, 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 that in recent, more recent times, they have started implementing elements of... of um, Finding the co the the different codices for the games, along with any other written material that might mention the same thing, mm -hmm. um, within the quote unquote black library, her her in universe joke, mm -hmm. um, as official missives about specific armies and such, and and then of course involving Warhammer Fantasy and a whole bunch of other bullshit. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it grew into this giant, fantastic clusterfuck of hilarity. Yeah. It and also... my my one recommendation to anyone who wants to see how the, the culmination of that clusterfuck of insanity and hilarity, just go watch If the Emperor Had a Podcast, the uh, episode about Inquisitor Draco. Oh, God, Inquisitor. This this Voxcast Populae is rated priority Omega. <laughs> Thank you, Stringstorm. Your uh your voice as the narrator and further and further more disgusted announcer of each chapter um will never fail to be fucking hilarious. It's um as as an aside, if the opportunity came, I would I would hire the shit out of Stringstorm. I think he does uh, commissions on his Patreon. I'll I'll have to look. Him and um, Goat would be two people I'd I'd love to hire to do um to do monastery music. Um, <laughs> especially especially if I can get someone to do a remake that integrates that that infamous thing from the from the o, from the Orun Valley, um, which was me basically ranting. What the fuck is an aura? <laughs> um. But and and when it when it came to when it came to all the when it came to all these materials, this was for a lot of pe for, for a lot of people. And this is something I need to make explicitly clear. 
their introduction to Warhammer 40k or Warhammer F and or Warhammer Fantasy was not through the war game itself. It was it was through video games like Dawn of War. It was through it was through these fa it was through these fan animations. It was through shit po it was through shit posts and memes. You had you had more and more people getting it getting in on the needs more DACA meme because you always need more DACA. To the point that to the point that da the term DACA itself has en has entered um, has entered meme dom lexicon, and mm. I and I end up I end up seeing it in in things that don't even that don't even involve Warhammer. And there and of and of course of course there were there were uh, there were other there were other projects like say the Lord Inquisitor which never materialized although it put out, uh, although it put out some pretty good teases. And um, the hell, the hell, the Hell's Reach pro project was a, was a massive un was a massive undertaking that went very damn well. And there and and there's and again and again, um, you had for a lot for a good amount of people that that was their that was their gateway into the into the hobby as a whole. Some people. Ellen, I didn't. I didn't even get. I didn't even get into um, to to um, people who who had whole videos dedicated to just um, just painting miniatures. There's plenty of people who do streams just pa just painting minis the same way. There are people who do streams just building gunpla. Mm-hmm. And people watch that shit. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there are there are cases of people watching people build gunpla because they want to watch the build and see what customization they do. And then there's cases of gravure, gravure idols building gunpla, and we know why people are watching them. Yeah. Oh. I mean, even even Kason, uh builds gunpla, but people are not always watching to watch her build gunpla. Which look, look, we're not look, we're not going, we're not going, to, we're not going to judge so long as you're honest. Yeah. But that, and then, um, then the f the first warning, the first warning sign was, um, what for that some that some didn't that some didn't heed was the announcement of a, of a um of a monthly of a monthly subscription service called Warhammer Plus. And <laughs> yep yeah, this this is where things start to go south. This is where things get fucky. Warhammer pl Warhammer Plus the th obviously obviously this was in an age when ev when everybody and their brother had some sort of monthly streaming service to the to the point where to the point where it started to get overcrowded and what it was supposed to in what it was supposed to include was um un a un um unified rule lookups um and um pa painting tu painting tutorials battle reports and and animations, and in the in the process of this, they ended up contacting several fan animators. Um, in part in particular, um, the guy the guy behind Astartes and Sodas, who ha who has a who has a co who had a collection of of um anim of Warhammer fan animations of his own, and he and all of Ostensibly, all of these people, inclu including the, including the person who did the, who did um, Death of Hope, ar arguably the darkest of these fan animations. Yeah. They they all um, it's uh, it seemed us they were all very excited g with the notion of, hey, we're going to be able to work directly with Games Workshop. I and I think I think you as well were a bit cautious because. I remember when the de I remember when the developer of Ruby Grim Eclipse was all excited about being able to work directly with Rooster Teeth, and then we saw what the final game ended up being, and um, the de the de the the, the gauntlet demo ended up be is still better. There is <clears throat> there is a almost. No, not even almost. There is an insidious evil quality to a giant megacorp reaching out to people who have uh, 
projects more popular than them. The first, the first sign of writing on the wall was the announcement of Warhammer Plus. Mm -hmm. The second sign is the fact that they're reaching out to people who are known to have fantastic fan projects that everybody is love it loves. They are beloved fan project uh, creators. And, and that right there is a sign of GW acknowledging that they can't compete. So they're just going to make it so they don't have to. And right, right around this time, that's when the other, that's when the other shoe started to drop with, with a update on the, on the IP, on the IP, on the, on the, on, on their IP rules. Chief <clears throat> among them being, you are not, al you are, unless, unless you're authorized by them, you're not, al you're not allowed to do fan animations. Oh. And this, this was the straw, this was where the straw really started to break the camel's back. There, the, the, the part of the, in, the intellectual property guidelines, and so these are guidelines. These are not even legally actionable, mm -hmm. especially considering Games Workshop is UK-based, but, they they, but these, they even posted these on their US website. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Here are the sections that are relevant. Fan fiction, hobby books, and magazines. Individuals may write their own stories, hobby books, and magazines based on our character and settings, but these must not include text, artwork, or imagery copied from any official Games Workshop material. They must be non-commercial, with no money being received or paid. This includes all forms of fundraising activity and generation of any advertising revenue. They must not be publicly distributed except for no-charge digital distribution. They must make it clear that they are unofficial without using any Games Workshop logos and include the word unofficial prominently on the front cover. And they must not be prejudicial to the goodwill, reputation, or integrity of Games Workshop or its intellectual property. Um, the only thing prejudicial, prejudicial to these, these things that Games Workshop has listed is Games Workshop themselves, but I won't get into that right now. The one that we uh, are most concerned with would be the section on fan artwork or no infringements on infringements mm -hmm. um fan films and animations individuals must not create fan films or animations based on our settings and characters these are only to be created under license from games workshop there's literally no way they can enforce that however just just the unfortunately just the throwing around of some of something in legalese is enough to make people nervous and that and one of those people was Ralpha Afbusa yep Rav Afbusa decided to, and his team they all did not just him but all of them especially considering they all have their own real lives and don't necessarily have the money to get into a legal battle with Games Workshop, they decided to throw the text to teach device on in, on indefinite hiatus after releasing the two completed parts of episode 30 that they had. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually found one of the many different forum posts about this. This one's Daka Daka. Mm -hmm. um, there's a there's a there's a line here. Um, Quite likely, their work would fall into fair use or fair dealing in the UK, which is true. But that's not what the issue is. The issue is the cost of defending their stance in court and the length of time and damages that Games Workshop would put them through to defend their legal position. For, for, um, for comparison, you're, you're talking about a giant corporation and... No doubt, Games Workshop is actually a fairly large corporation. They have an army of lawyers. Versus Brava Alpha Busa, who in his own The Fate of TTS YouTube video, specifically stated he's got a family to think about. He, he, you know, His son was just born recently, 
He's got to think about what their what their interests are, and so does everyone else on his team. They all have their own responsibilities in real life to think through in order to support themselves, support their families, keep themselves alive. Mm-hmm. None of them has the spare funds to hire their own, and they would need an army of lawyers because it's corporation. You'd have to do corp versus corp lawyer type battle to start a suit and keep a suit going even with the even if it was guaranteed that they would get a a a ruling of fair use in the event that they ruled under u.s jurisdiction or a ruling of fair dealing if they ruled under uk jurisdiction um if i had to guess it would be u.s jurisdiction because youtube videos are all hosted in the u.s and that's where you most of the time jurisdiction lies when it comes to created works posted on YouTube. Uh, even if it was guaranteed, he knew for a fact, if Brother Alphabusa knew for a fact he would win that case, he doesn't have the money to carry it on for the three to ten years Games Workshop could put him through. With motion after motion of dismissal and and changing the times, everything, it would occur. This is how corporations beat the little man. We have enough money to run through court. You don't. That is how corporations fuck people. And that is exactly why why they had to they felt they had to stop. Mm-hmm. Even if GW never came after them, that's a sword of Damocles hanging right over them by the tiniest hair. And in the event GW does come after them, it becomes an official C and D. And at that point, they'd have to take the whole channel down. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if you're thinking it can't get worse, I've got bad news for you because it does. Are we talking about the thing? (laughs) We are talking about the thing now. Okay. 40. We're we're not th- we're not quite there yet, but but there's a there's a few small things that I that I need to get out of my system. Okay. Forty eight hours after that, word got out that any uh, that any mod involving involving war- involving at the very least Warhammer Total War two and probably and probably others on Steam Workshop had to take off the donate button, which Steam did not enforce. I might add. Um. Uh, Probably, probably because probably because probably because despite despite all despite all the faults we can lay at Valve and there are many we can lay at Valve, they're not that stupid. They learned from the paid mods bullshit that uh, Bethesda tried back in what 2015 at this point. Well, the thing that they tried twice. Let's not forget. Yes. As lazy and bloated as Valve has been about managing Steam or making games with. Half Life Alex being the first game of any note in how many years? <clears throat> well, well, I was going to bring up Artifact. <laughs> you, were, you couldn't do that with a straight face. No. I was waiting for the break. No. I was waiting for the break. But, again, all the faults that we can lay at Valve and Steam's feet, uh, Valve and Steam at least value their customers to the point that they don't fuck with them too much. Mm hmm. Um, GW, well, GW does not. GW gives no fucks. And this is, and this is where, and, um, then, then, no. Uh, I do remember hearing some rumors that they were going after, that they were going after eBay dealers as well, but I could not, um, properly corroborate that, so take that with a big grain of salt. Um, I think, let me, I, I know that uh, one of the videos Commissar Gamza did recently was about the eBay takedowns. Um, I think he had uh, sources, too. And if it, if, if that, if that is the, if that is the case, you can add, th- you can add that to the proverbial pile. Oh my god. God. Okay. Um, I-, I can't find source. It's probably buried in the comments because Gamza keeps forgetting to put them in the description. Um, 
There's a pinned comment on this video. <clears throat> I'm not going to give a name, but it says, LOL, the sculpt having the exact pose, similar decoration, the equipment with minimal change on the eyes to become an eye, to serve the exact same purpose on what the real Mega Gargant do, so it's clearly an IP thief. Stop being a boycott and have a basic sense. I think this person probably does not speak English as their first language. You think you are funny with all of those sarcasm while you are actually just idiotically defending an act of pirating properties. At this point, with your hatred of GW, you should delete everything Warhammer-related so you not be copy-striked someday, as well as not getting all your negativity shut down. Build up a massive follower by sucking their blood, and then traitoring by shitting on them is quite easy, eh? Oh, so, oh, oh, that kind of... That it, 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 he posed, he posed... The pin, he pinned the comment comment of 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 a of an apologist, mm -hmm. and the apologist thing we'll get we'll get to in a bit. I I want I want to I want to save that because I want I want the I want the apologism that we've seen to be really put to be really put into perspective. When, yeah. When we get, when we um see when we see what's coming. Yeah, but they 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 I think. If there is a source for this, Gamza probably has it in the video itself, but the video is nine minutes long, so I don't have the time to review it while we're here. Mm -hmm. um, but Games Workshop taking down eBay auctions is a thing. And so that's, I would consider that somewhat halfway confirmed. Mm -hmm. And when it comes, when it comes, and um, then we get to the, then we get to the, f there's, there, we should note that around this around this time, um, there there have been these massive pushes for, for um Warhammer for Warhammer 40k, and to a much lesser extent um, fantasy. And the reason why we're focusing more on 40k instead of fantasy is the fact that 40k is the flagship. So it's it is the much more popular property. I will be very blunt about that. Yeah. That's not to say that Warhammer Fantasy is not popular. It's just that War, Warhammer 40k dwarfs it by quite an amount. Yeah, and a lot, and a lot of a lot of the a lot of these amounts of bullshit. The closest the closest thing to the closest bit of bullshit that's ha egregious bullshit that's happened with Warhammer Fantasy was the End Times and then Age of Sigmar, which had a rough start but start but started to get better. Um, and now and now it's now what's happening is more universal to both Warhammer and 40k because of the IP rules and everything just applying to everything GW owns. Mm -hmm. So the fuckery that's happening now is applicable to both fantasy and 40k. Mm -hmm. Um, I would bring, I would, I'm tempted to bring up the whole Primaris Space Marines thing, but that's, but that's, um, but there's not a whole lot to dissect. It's just them. It's just them wanting more Space Marines. Space Marines. Um, they they just want to, they just want to introduce more power creep. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I will, I will throw it in, I will throw it in the face of, an, of anybody complaining about power creep in, at, in anime when they're not looking in their own house. Um, but, then, but then we, then we, then, but throughout all of this, there's, there's been this growing suspicion that Warhammer is, that Warhammer is trying to cash out. Trying to trying to get out of the tabletop business and be an and be a IP distri IP distributor, a, a la what um what D where DC made their money in the eighties. And uh, the biggest the biggest voice behind this particular uh, idea has been Arch. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Arch, for always being a voice that is loud and fun. I as much as people I... may may like or dislike you, I appreciate what you do. I am I am fully I am fully aware that there are people who really really dislike Arch, but I tr I treat I put them on the same level as the people who have a massive hate boner for Dave Meltzer. <laughs> okay. They dislike Arch because they because they have no way to counter what he says. Um. <laughs> yeah, and the, as far and as as far as as far look if, look. There are certain. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that everything Arch says is, is gold, and uh, and there are and there are certain there are certain positions that he and I would significantly disagree with. Least least of which being what least of which being Skaven being best faction. <laughs> but 
at the at the very at the very least um I can I can I can rely on the fact that he that somebody like him is not going to bullshit me. Yes. And when it comes to the important stuff, you know, all the anti-consumer practices GW pulls, you're on the same page. We all are. Now, with now with with all that because it the 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 reason for the for this for this particular suspicion about um about the cashing out thing has been has been has been things like introdu like um in the case of fantasy in, in introducing more introducing more and more fantastical elements like the put ice and bears on ev on everything with uh, or or put um or or go or try and go full wusha in the form of Cathay. um <sighs> Cathay. Hmm. or the or the or the or um put or do or doing the whole ice qu ice queen with ice soldiers mount using m mounted on ba mounted on bears shit with Kislev. Yep. When pr when previous when previously being able to use ice magic was an extreme rarity. But now everybody can apparently. Oh. Um, and in the case of forty k dot. Dialing, dialing back some, dialing back some of the more um, sa savage elements with, say, with say the um, space wolves, and trying to make everything look far more tactical. Having having Rowboat Girly Man come back and start a brand new fucking crusade with brand new space with brand new space marines and and even new and even new and even new gravity based technology that is that that is essentially them trying to bring in hover tanks. I am. Um, I I have to say that despite them being bringing back Girly Man for that, Girly Man's reaction to the bloated bureauc bureaucratic um, theocracy that the that the Imperium had become uh, was on point for any son of the Emperor. So I will I will give that to Ro to Robo. But in addition to this, you have you have them attempting to do crossovers with other me with other media. Whether it whether it be um, whether it be working alongside Bandai for action figures, or or, or working alongside um, Wizards of the Coast for a few promotional Magic the Gathering cards. But th and I w and I want to bring that kind of thing up just to help set the stage for what's to come. Because then we get to the. To a infamous NDA that dro that um dropped earlier this week at the time of this recording. Now to note, it isn't called a non-disclosure agreement. It's called a confidentiality agreement because England or something. I don't know. Um, but this this is for all intents and purposes a non-disclosure agreement between GW and whatever other party that they are working with. And while I myself am not a lawyer, uh, I have family who is, and I'm very familiar with the law. So, as it is, I've read some of this. It's heinous. It's a fucking death trap. And I don't know how where you want to start this. <laughs> um, I feel I feel that we should we should first start we should first start with the fact that for the for a good amount of time I um. I was I was going back and forth about the legitimacy of this. However, and I I know I know some people are using are using say the are using say um, margins not one hundred percent lining up or the, or the way the text is the way the text is set up to say that this thing is fake. Um, and then it was revealed through it was revealed that it was re re real through unfortunate means that I don't want to go into here. Yeah, those means are potentially devastating for whomever was the signatory on this particular uh, particular document. So, I feel the, I, f I, f I feel the um f I feel the first th the first thing that we sh that we should go into is is the uh, I'd say I'd say it would be the I'd say it would be the obligations. And and the egreg <laughs> the egregious parts in there. Okay, um, I'd actually just 
we need to start with the definitions before we can do anything here. All right. And and that's because there's actually a, a part in here that is so egregious that it matters. So they use, they, they define five things. And a few of these definitions are very important for later obligations. Uh, the first is the definition of whatever confidential information GW is going to be handing out that would be applicable under this confidentiality agreement. Um, you know, whatever the confidential information is presented to whoever the recipient is. Um, and they use these uh, seven sections, including but not limited to the fact that discussions and negotiations, negotiations are taking place between the parties and the status of those discussions and negotiations. That's pretty typical for an NDA. When you have an NDA, you don't want to disclose what your negotiations are or even if you're doing them yet. Um, the existence and terms of this agreement... So, uh, I'm not an expert on NDAs and contract law by any stretch of the imagination, mm -hmm. but uh, both Monk and I are pretty sure that while you can put the terms of an NDA as something you cannot disclose as part of the NDA, you cannot put the existence of an NDA as something you cannot disclose as part of the NDA. That's, that's, that's almost a, a, a behavior that would be predatory for whomever you're going to engage with this NDA mm -hmm. because they'd never be able to know what this NDA was about until they received it from you. And then they couldn't tell anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, moving beyond that, any information that would be regarded as confidential by a reasonless business person relating to the business affairs contracts of GW operations, processes, product information of GW information or analysis derived from the original confidential information or any information developed by parties in connection with, whatever the purpose is the purpose being an entirely different document that they'll draw up for whatever the the purpose of their work agreement is the confidentiality agreement is is in part to keep that purpose under lock as well mm -hmm. another good uh another good definition here the effective date uh, means the date on which the agreement has been signed by the recipient in relation to a company, that company, its subsidiaries, its holding companies, and their subsidiaries, as defined in Section 1159 of the Companies Act of 2006, which I believe is a UK Act. Awesome. Let me check that. Let me check that real quick. Yes, that is a UK law. So now we see that even with these definitions, they're leaning heavily into UK law. We'll get into that later. Mm -hmm. Um. The definitions for restricted customer and restricted person are not extremely important, but still important to remember that these are a restricted customer is a client or customer with GW that has been dealing with customer um, starting at the effective date, which they've defined, and going back 12 months preceding. Any people who have been a client or customer in that 12 months are restricted. Same with a restricted person being any person who has been employed or directly or indirectly engaged by Games Workshop from the effective date to 12 months prior. So anyone who has been a client or customer of GW and anyone who has been uh, an employee or has been indirectly or directly engaged by GW 12 months from the signing date prior, so that entire past year from that signatory date, so if we were to sign something like this today, all the way back to September 26, 2020, our restricted persons which and restricted customers, which are important for some of the later things we'll discuss. This last definition is a big one for me that we'll get into some, with some of the way later sections. The term. So when they say the, the, the term, this is the term of the contract, how long the contract lasts. Mm -hmm. And the term, as defined by this document, is a period of 36 months from and including the date of the last disclosure of confidential information to the recipient by GW. That's not 36 months from time of signing this document. That's 36 months after the last time GW sends this person or this, co or this company co what they consider confidential information. So you're beholden to this NDA for as long as you're receiving confidential information. There's no closing term there. The term only starts counting down 
after you stop receiving uh, information. Mm-hmm. And how do you pr- and how do you prove that's the last time you received information? What if GW in court says, "Well, we sent you something ver- via post, blah blah blah, this time and date, so it's clearly still within term." I never received that. For the purposes of this NDA, and we'll get into it later, that doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. The fact that they sent it at all then obligates you. Which is <laughs> ve- which is a ve- which is a vast over overstretch. Then we. Um... I'd say I'd say I'd say most of the most of the initial obligations are pretty much the same stuff you would see in an NDA. You know, you don't you don't hand out confidential information to people that aren't uh, uh, give who don't have written consent from DW for you to hand out that confidential information to. You'll keep it safe and make sure that you and your employees do not uh, disclose it accidentally or on purpose. Um, you don't use the information for anything other than the purposes defined, which that's all normal NDA bullshit. Um, I do, th- I do think that um, the, the part three point two in the in the document um, raises an eye raises an eyebrow for me as well. Um, no party shall make or permit any person to make any public announcement concerning. This ag- concerning this agreement or the or the purpose without the prior written consent of the other party, except as required by law or any governmental or regulatory authority, including without limitation any relevant securities exchange or by any court or other authority of competent jurisdiction. So somebody's already um, somebody's already violated three point two. The fact that we, the public, now have a copy of in our hands violates three point two. And just it, the just the fact that you're not that you're not allowed to disclose having this having this NDA, um, that's some that's something that if that if it was brought up if it was brought up the chain, I'd imagine the FCC would have a few words to say about it. Possibly, yeah, I, I could see that being a thing. Um, there's also there's also this other one back up in uh back up in the number two obligations of the recipient not copy reduce to writing or otherwise record the confidential information except if and to the extent strictly necessary for the purpose and any such copies reductions to writing and records shall be the property of gw so again 2.1.4 has been violated that the fact that we have a copy of this confidentiality agreement what whether this copy is still accurate because they could have updated it by now knowing that it's out there there could be an updated confidentiality agreement, and then they'd have to send that co- that updated confidentiality agreement to all signatories for new signatures. And if those and if those people do not uh, sign the new copies, then this agreement falls apart. But that's a different issue. Um, that three point two is weird because three point the the other part of three point one talking about the return of information and announcements um, is fairly standard you you destroy and erase all information that you have that's confidential once the agreement at the request of the of this of uh of gw or in any event on completion of the purpose the recipient shall promptly do all these things and then they certify to to writing in gw that that it has complied with the destruction of all materials Mm -hmm. now the part that makes no fucking sense. And this is why I brought up restricted customer and restricted persons. <clears throat> is all of section fucking four. Oh, yes. ND- NDAs are a thing. They tell you not to disclose certain details of documents and other things in order to prevent um, sabotage or, or corporate espionage or, you know, any sort of... of insider information on negotiations um prevent prevent uh other companies coming in and undercutting you for example you don't as an nda you don't disclose the price that you're that you've uh, put forward for your contract when you want to bid on uh say a contract with the military uh with the military when you're one of the arms developers in the u.s there's an nda there that keeps the price low until after the contract is fulfilled Section 4 is a non-compete clause. And that's insane. Because it's assu- I'm assuming 
since this is on behalf of companies and individuals, and you're going to be receiving confidential information from Games Workshop, this is part of things like uh, business deals where they're selling models for other people to sell it at their retail stores and such. So as part of their non-compete -comp agreement, you're not allowed to canvas, solicit, or otherwise seek the custom of restricted customers. So anyone who has had any business dealings with GW in the past 12 months from the time you signed this document, you can't go and solicit business from them. And you're not attempt to to and you're not to induce or attempt to induce. Why did they repeat that? Uh, induce or attempt to induce, excuse me, a restricted customer to cease or refrain from conducting business with or to reduce the amount of business conducted with or to vary adversely the terms upon which it conducts business with GW. Basically, Games Workshop is telling these other people, okay, we're going to give you all the stuff, but remember not to make anybody else we're giving stuff to not deal with us. They're trying to prevent uh, middlemanning. And while I can see to an extent why they would do that, um, you don't generally see most most uh, retail coming from straight from warehouse. Um, usually it goes source, distributors, then retailers. But GW is trying to act directly as distributor in this case, apparently. Um, and then... Without GW's prior permission at any time during the term. So not only for the 12 months prior to this sig the signing of this document, but for the 36 months after GW stops giving you information, have any business dealings with a restricted customer. To me, that's illegal. That's monopoly. Oh yeah, after we stop giving you stuff, if we stop doing all this, you know, our, our contract is fulfilled, the purpose is fulfilled, so you destroy all the confidential information we've given you. Um, yeah, now for three years after that, you can't do business with anybody else who does business with us. That is what that says. Mm -hmm. And, and it, this... it, it, just, it just goes on with this. Mm -hmm. Same with uh, employing restricted persons. So anyone GW hired and then later let go within the, the last year that, uh, or, after, or the 36 months after you've stopped receiving information, uh, you can't hire those people. Which, if we, ha if, we haven't made, if we haven't made it clear, a lot of, a lot of what's in this particular item Ooh. is a vast, vast overreach. This is them putting a noose around the signatory's neck. And when the signatory signs, the knot is tightened. At any point, Games Workshop can pull the fucking lever and your neck snaps. You know, you know, how, we, you know how we brought up um, the Sword of Damocles when discussing the... When, discu when discussing... Um, people continuing on with fan animations, especially, especially if the emperor had a text-to-speech device. Mm -hmm. um, this particular NDA very much feels like a sword of Damocles. The problem is that, in the case of the sword of Damocles, while he did sit there of his own free will, he uh, he he didn't set up the help set up the sword. This this is someone literally signing their own death death warrant willingly. Um, and something I find absolutely hilarious and ha also has zero amount of self awareness from the legal team of GW. Section four dash two. The undertakings in this clause four are intended for the benefit f benefit of and shall be enforceable by GW. 4.3, each of the undertakings in this Clause 4 is a separate undertaking by the recipient and shall be enforceable by GW separately and independently. <laughs> GW is saying, yeah, these are all for our benefit, not yours. That is literally what those two clauses say. Then, of course, there's even more bullshit. Um, 
One of the ones I pointed out in Section 5, Reservation of Rights and Acknowledgement. Um, this says things like all the confidential information is GW's, none of it is the recipients, they aren't a... There's no express or implied warranty of represent or representation concerning the confidential information. Uh, disclosure by GW about the confidential information does not represent an offer for any further agreement of the purpose. 5.4 and 5.5, and then later the indemnity clause 6.2, all tie together in the most heinous and predatory package I've ever seen. 5.4, the recipient acknowledges that damages alone would not be an adequate remedy for the breach of any of the provisions of this agreement. Accordingly, without prejudice to any other rights and remedies it may have, GW shall be entitled, without proof of special damages, to the granting of equitable relief, including without limitation, injunctive relief, or specific performance, concerning any threatened or actual breach of any of the provisions of this agreement. For those of you who do not speak legalese, because I know that there are a bunch of you that don't speak legalese, let me boil this down. The recipient acknowledges. This means the, reci the recipient knowingly and willingly says yes to the fact that damages are not enough if the there's a breach of contract. That them paying damages is not enough. And it doesn't even have to be actual breach. It's threatened breach of the provisions. On top of that, it's without prejudice. You don't go before a judge. You don't go into a court. You just pay them. That's what this says. Mm -hmm. Well, damages aren't going to be enough. So you have to pay us, you know, equitable relief. On top of that, including injunctive release or specific performance. And it doesn't even have to be an actual breach of contract. Just threatened. And you agree to this. You sign this, you are signing away your right to even go to court to try and say, well, we we can't pay those damages. You just pay them or you get fucked. This is a spiked dildo in your ass. And because of because of that, for this this ends up this for me at least for me at least, and I think for you as well, this crosses the line between greedy incompetence into outright evil this is maliciousness this is uh the the realization that google's don't be evil is no longer applicable to google uh this is the realization that disney is a legal monopoly and no one could do anything about it this is the realization that gw is legitimately trying to fuck every little man they can in an attempt to stifle competition. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason I say 5.5 adds on to this is because it means the recipient is liable for the actions or omissions of its employees, if any, in relation to confidential in information, as if they were the actions or omissions of the recipient. And there's no clause here that says, except in the case of, you know, a belligerent ex-employee. You have one employee in your in your employee who is pissed off at you for whatever reason and has access to this confidential information. They can release it onto the internet, prove it was you, and you're on the hook. Which means even if you even if you are the goodest of good boys to G to GW, they may they may just they may just as well decide to change their mind and fuck you. Mm -hmm. And then this ties into the indemnity clause. Um, the indemnity clause says that the recipient shall indemnify and keep fully indemnified GW at all times against all liabilities, costs, including legal costs on an indemnity basis, expenses, damages and losses, including any direct, indirect, or consequential losses, loss of profit, loss of reputation, and all interest, penalties, and other costs and expenses suffered or incurred by GW arising from or in connection with, one, any breach, negligent performance, or non-performance of this agreement by the recipient, two, the actions or omissions of any employee of the recipient, if any, three, any breach of the warranties contained in clause two, and four, the enforcement of this agreement. And indemnity, for those of you who don't understand, is basically insurance money. Mm -hmm. 
And then 6.2, the indemnity in this clause 6 shall apply whether or not the recipient has been negligent or at fault. They are going to make you pay them protection money whether you did it or not. I, be I believe you I believe you came dangerously close to com to comparing them to to compare them to mafia tactics but you didn't want to I won't dirty the mafia's name. <laughs> I won't dirty the mafia's name by attaching them to something like this. At least the mafia is honest and you know what you're getting fucked by. Mm -hmm. And the re the <sighs> rest and even even with all of this, with all of with all of the bullshit that we've that we've talked about over the last hour, there are still peop there are still people who still insist on not only not only standing, not only going with not only um di being diehard loyalists to a company that does not love them back, but I but is actively attacking anyone and everyone. Who ha who happens who happens to cr who happens to criticize these policies? Whether there are <laughs> there are so many things wrong with this NDA, but there are three more giant problem pain points I want to get into, Go if ahead. I may. Clause seven: term and termination. Regardless of any termination of this agreement. The obligations of each party under this agreement shall continue in full force and effect for the term. Which is to say, oh yeah, we don't want to be part of this NDA anymore. Okay, go ahead. For the next 36 months, you're still under this NDA even though you canceled it. That's what that says. Mm -hmm. Every little clause in here, you're still under that. Um, section 8, specifically... Uh, section 8.1 This agreement constitutes the whole agreement between the parties and supersedes all previous agreements between the parties relating to its subject matter. Each party acknowledges that in entering to this agreement, it has not relied on and shall have no right or remedy in respect of any statement, representation, assurance, or warranty, whether made negligently or innocently, other than as expressly set out in this agreement. Nothing in this clause shall limit or exclude any liability for fraud or for fraudulent misrepresentation. This is saying, hey, if you previously had a contract with us that had better terms, that was more fair to you, signing this takes all those away. And, and then the final one, section 14. I pointed out this one first when I was looking at it, remember? Mm -hmm. Governing law... And jurisdiction. This agreement and any dispute or claim arising out of or in connection with it is or its subject matter or formation, including non-contractual disputes or claims, shall be governed by and construed in accordance with the law of England. 14.2. The parties irrevo irrevocably agree. So, unable to go back. That the courts of England shall have exclusive jurisdiction to settle any dispute or claim that arises out of or in connection with this agreement or its subject matter or formation, including non-contractual disputes or claims. Mm -hmm. The last part of this is... Like, we've already put how many nails in the coffin at this point. The, co the coffin is not not six feet. It's 12, 14, 22 feet buried. Mm. We've poured concrete on top of this fucker. But no, it just won't stay down. This is the goddamn new kitten in that fucking coffin. Um, this makes any dealer with GW, any person worldwide, beholden to the laws and courts of England. If you're someone based in the US, where, I'm going to be honest, the laws are a lot fairer about this sort of predatory fucking contract. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that doesn't matter. You signed the contract. You can't, uh, you can't sue them in, in, in US court. You can't take them to US court. You, that's what you agreed to. That is what you agreed to. 
I would argue that this is something that usually wouldn't be enforceable, like many of the clauses we see in EULAs and, and uh, terms of service these days that are unenforceable because they're contracts of adherence and imply an, a, uh, an uneven bargaining power between signatories, which is how a contract of adherence works. Mm -hmm. However, this is an NDA meant to address other businesses, and I believe that this would not technically be a contract of adherence in the same fashion. It's still a contract of adherence because it's Games Workshop dictating terms at someone else. And there isn't really any discussion of a return. So I would love to see what the purpose documents look like in order to see what the return is, since it's clearly the purpose documents that hold it. Mm -hmm. But this fucking piece of paper, anyone signs this, you are fucked. You're fucked. So... I don't care how many people watch this right now. Take this information to heart, if nothing else. Take it to every fucking corner of the internet that cares about GW, that cares about Warhammer, and cares about making them accountable. Do not sign this. Never fucking sign this. Tear it up in their fucking faces if you're in person, and if you're not, make a video of you on your desktop deleting the fucking email and giving them a fucking middle finger emoji PNG. I don't give a fuck. Just do not fucking sign this. And You'll fuck yourself. Here's here's the thing. From at, speaking at speaking as the owner and operator of the of the monastery. Despite the fact despite the fact that I have done three videos on Warhammer related material. That, be, that being my rev that being my review of um for, of Fantasy Roleplay 4th edition versus Zweihander. My co my coverage uh, my coverage of Ra of the original edition of Wrath and Glory by Ulysses Spiel and my coverage of the remastered version of Wrath and Glory by Cubicle 7 as and Okay, I tell a lie. Four videos and my coverage of Age of Sigmar Soulbound. The thing is, GW, I don't, I do not sign any contracts with anybody. Any time that I've had some, that I've had somebody on to discuss anything, it is always, it is always, it has always been in good, is always been in good faith with a handshake agreement at best. So if I, so if if by some miracle you end up digging around and see, and see my and see my old see my old shit um and des and decide and decide to decide to strike it or something like that <laughs> I you it is a it is a case where there's going to be no I'm not I'm not signing any contract with you so you can you can promptly fuck off right with everybody else who ha who has come who has come in thinking that they thinking that they know better how to run this place. The only person who runs this place is me. And and, and anybody and anybody else who th who thinks that they, who thinks that they know better how to run a place that I built with my own bare hands can fuck off. And the only person who banes him is me. And anyone else who thinks they can try and bane him better, um, get in line. I'll fight you next. <laughs> Just as long, just as long as I can, just as long as you give me time to actually, um, to actually, to actually build it on pay per view, so we can make some money off it. Oh, I like that idea. Um, that's a good idea. But, like, like we said, even with all this, there have been people who will, who will not only defend, not only defend to the death games workshop, but have out, but have outright attacked people, um, who are, who are, who are, who are criticizing the these particular, these particular, um. These particular plat, these particular um, not platforms, but deci decisions, very dunderheaded decisions that 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 Games Workshop has been doing. Even going so far as to call them crybabies. I've seen that get bandied about frequently, or uh, or viciously attacking anybody who leaves, like that, like that pinned comment that you brought up earlier. Yeah. I, w I want you. I'm not going to have you repeat that comment, but I want you. I want everybody listening to keep that to to keep that comment in the back of your mind with everything that we've just said over the last 20 minutes all the stuff with that NDA all ev everything with that if if all all of that all of that shit apparently if we even criticize that 
we are we are sucking the blood of G of GW to to make a profit. Even though, well, one, I'm not ma I don't make a profit from my videos. I intentionally don't monetize them. And two, and two, um, that is the exact kind of that is the exact kind of thing that an abusive spouse says. <laughs> <laughs> or in a or a battered woman. <laughs> I think of a lot of these fans as abused spouses, with GW being the beating hand. And even with that, a lot of a lot of people on se on several Warhammer based subreddits, as a result of all this, um, got fed up. Um, Sodas got fed up because he was getting harassed by by um by by GW stands. Over, over the fact that he had over over the fact that he that he decided to drop his drop any um any 40 any 40k stuff mostly because he was getting pissed off uh, now supposedly that GW wasn't contacting him now grant granted the evidence I have of that is a tr is Google translating a Korean forum but it is still significantly damning that they essentially brought him they essentially brought him in and did nothing and did nothing with him especially since the only the only animation the only animations that are on Warhammer Plus are um are screwed up Astartes Astartes where they where they fucked up the audio and the and the visuals um one episode of Bolter and Chainsword that looks like a poor man's uh, Mike Mignolia motion comic which um if it if it were if if Bolter and Chainsword were a were a fan project, I probably would have a higher opinion of it than it being an official product. Yeah, there's a that that was actually one of the concerns that came up with the whole Warhammer Plus thing. Fa the reason fan works get so acclaimed is because this is usually a one man band or a small group of people with no money, few resources, and all they're doing is spending their time to do something. Mm -hmm. To create what we find beloved. I mean, <laughs> TTS started out as literal PN... I mean, it still is mostly. Literal PNGs of art from different parts of, of, of different books and such. Mm -hmm. That they used the squash and stretch tools in paint shop to make move. It's the it's the kid annoying the the girl with the trumpet meme all over again, except as an entire motion video comic thing. Or any no, any number of um of of sprite animations that I that I'd that I'd watch when, that I'd watch in high school on Newgrounds. Exactly, it's it's simple, fun, entertaining, but still very time consuming for these people who have, as I pointed out earlier, lives, families, and jobs. Mm -hmm. And so, Games Workshop needs to have higher quality as a corporate company. Yeah. Then, it, then again, then again, the last time that they tried to have higher quality, we got that Ultramarines movie, and we know how that turned out. The last time we had anything actual quality of a uh, uh, from Games Workshop, they were still making pewter models. <laughs> I will not dispute that. But a lot, and even the now, I. Some there were some there were some people doing the whole boycotting thing. Um, I knew that was never I knew that was never going to last. All it takes is one announcement to stop a boycott. Um, but as far as boycotting Warhammer Plus, um, that I'm perfect that I'm perfectly in favor with. In fact, I think I shared a video of someone doing of someone doing the orc freebooter voice, <laughs> saying that saying that may, maybe maybe when Warhammer Plus comes out, and that that we should loot them back. <laughs> I I okay so. Here's the thing. Arch, uh, I pointed out, he said he wasn't organizing a boycott, but he absolutely was <laughs> organizing a boycott. Uh, Arch pointed out that the weak point is going to be Warhammer Plus. Mm -hmm. Because it's right now what it has is a few terrible animations, a couple of battle reports that you can find better on YouTube. You can find better battle report content on YouTube than on Warhammer Plus. Some and painting tutorials, paint. which again, again, you can find better out. on YouTube. <laughs> the, they don't have any content to speak of to draw in an establishing fan base. Mm -hmm. 
If they had more content, if they had laid off longer, gotten more content built up, and then launched, maybe they would be able to weather the storm. But if enough people go, there's nothing here, I don't like this, and cancel after they try maybe a free subscription or whatever, if they even have that, I very much doubt it. It's probably you have to pay to even get in. Mm -hmm. um, then, then Warhammer Plus is going to bleed them dry. Cons Consider as a, consider as a bit of a consider as a bit of a contrast. Um, when when New Japan World was launched, one of the one of the there were two things that were big appeals for it. One, um, at least at least for us Westerners, a relatively easier way to watch pay per views live. Now, granted, you're watching. Yeah, e east, but east. My my bad, but you are. Uh, of course, of course, you're still having to watch them on Japan time, which I, which um, come January I'm going to be dreading because, um, because four di four days of Wrestle Kingdom and Co and Cork and Hall just, <laughs> just fucking end me end me. <laughs> uh, I mean, you can always ask Murder Grandpa to do that. He's in the states now. I'd rather not. <laughs> hey, you're the one who wanted to die. It'd be, the be probably one of the better ways for you to die. I think I. If I'm going, if I'm going to go out, I'd rather go out in a blaze of glory, but by, by way by way of a, by way by way of a um, exploding barbed wire th barbed wire thing with Onita. <laughs> okay, you got me there. <laughs> um, but when it but um when but but um comparative. And there's also the fact that a lot that a lot of the old a lot of the older um, shows, and a lot of older matches were um, were on New Japan World. Um, you have you have the math you have the massive in the case of something like Disney Plus you had the you have the massive Disney Vault including a, including a lot of including a lot of old cartoons that people grew up on. I know a lot of the people that I know that ended up getting Disney Plus the first thing that they ended up grab first thing that they ended up rewatching was stuff like Gargoyles. Which you should do anyways, because Gargoyles was fucking awesome. We don't talk about the Goliath Chronicles, though. But th but that l but that lack of content is significantly going to be a weakness. Epic Games in their first year didn't didn't have a whole lot of content in the Epic Games Store, which is probably the reason why they um why they did that whole exclusivity thing. Mm -hmm. But they but um. They had they had slowly they had slowly I'd say I'd say what helped Epic Games get a foothold is the monthly free games thing that they did. Like I've I've got a I've got a handful of things on, from that store and I've never spent a penny. It's mostly it's mostly been freebies. That and um, exclusivity the timed exclusivity of when did Epic Games Store launch? I know I know that um. When Hades was early access, that was one of the first waves of um, of that exclusivity. Um, yeah, the Epic Game Store launched in 2018, uh, and I think it's one of its first exclusives. Like one of the smaller exclusives, stuff like the Hades, um, Hades early access and everything. Mm -hmm. One of the bigger's one, one of the bigger exclusives was um, the Outer Worlds. Mm -hmm. Which pissed me off to no end. I legit sent that. Did I ever tell you about the time I sent them an email? No, you didn't. Oh, I'll tell you about that after we're done with Geekwatch. It's not extremely relevant. Mm -hmm. But regardless, regardless, enough enough people had decided that th that they had had enough and decided to leave. And and there were several. There were sev There were several. Um. Um, me messages on on various subreddits, forums, and the like, with just with just one keyword, Exodus, which is what which is why I titled this week's episode the Exploring the 40k Exodus, where you have a lot of people moving over to to the le to the world of BattleTech, and um, it would be very it it would be very easy to say that the reason why this was done is because is because battle t is because BattleTech is a very high profile um, sci science fiction setting with thir with thirty years of history. However, I do f I do feel that that I do feel that um, it's a bit of an oversimplification. I think it very it very much is. 
there is, uh, and I will, I will, I will always, rec I will. When it comes, when it, trying to summarize a setting like BattleTech is going is going to be tricky because of again that th that thirty years of history. But I'm going to at least try and do a better job than Ra than Razorfist did. Yeah, so yeah, that whole BattleTech and introduction video was complete shit. Um, <laughs> but <sighs> BattleTech is a me is a mech series, and ne and and its me its particular ins its particular styling with mechs is more of the tank is more of the tank with legs motif that was used in a lot in a lot of old in a lot of old school SF, and is and is you and is um. You'd, and and is in stark contrast to the more power armor style more power armor and pilot culture stylings of mecha anime even though it has it has drawn some notes from from mecha anime in one un, in one unfortunate um hodgepodge that is beyond the scope of the, of this episode but uh, but give them the name so that they can go look in morbid curiosity just look. Just look up the un. Just look up the unseen mechs, and you'll and you'll be able <laughs> to go down a particular rabbit hole that we don't particularly have the have the time to do. If we do a, battle, <laughs> if we do an episode solely dedicated to BattleTech, then we will consider it. I I, I can almost guarantee we'll do a, an episode solely battle dedicated to BattleTech at some point, Monk. But you have the combination of that, and then you have mi mixtures of space opera. Um, mecha pilots as 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 modern day knights errant, and um po and po and political and mil and military drama. That sounds very similar to a to a to an actual mecha anime everybody loves. Mm -hmm. Which is which is why which is why I find it which is why I find it funny that the likes of Razor Fist would would um would keep. Would would say that this that this mech series is totally not like those mech anime with their pretty boys and the like. And if, I'm like, you only watched Gundam Wing, didn't you? Because <laughs> even even Gundam Double O with its pretty boys still has a ton of fucking political intrigue. Yeah, there's a, there has there has all there has always been that, and you would think that this is where I'm do, this is where I'd bring up the whole wow cool robot meme. But to be quite honest, um. I find that anybody who uses that meme unironically is a fucking idiot. <laughs> there is, because it because it implies it implies that there isn't room for both. Um, to use to use it to use a corollary example, there 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 is a, there is a legit arg there is a decent argument to be made about about the about what kind of political statement um, Call of Duty Four Modern Warfare was making. Especially when it came to the gunship mission, re ref being very similar to re to real world footage, um, and th but at the same time, you can you can take that route, or you can just take it as a route of a big of a big dumb shooter, or if you're a fucking idiot, you can say that it's, you can say that it's that it's a revenge video game. Hi, movie Bob, you're still a fucking idiot. Yeah, I'm not kidding. He used he used that I, he used that I, argument, and it was fucking. Stupid. I know. I I didn't I didn't expect to hear that reference. Um, it's, the sole, that's the sole from reason, a long ago. The sole so reason long ago. I bring, the sole reason I bring up that bring that up is the idea the idea that you that you can't that um that that you have to be focused on one or the other that that the two that that the political theater or the kick ass robot thing is mutually exclusive is wrong. Now, with with that with that kind of thing in mind, this is where, for the for those who are for those who are participating in this exodus, I would exercise a degree of caution. Now, depending on depending on what drew you into 40k, you will you will you will um have an easier or a more difficult time getting into things. If you if you are if you are a, if you are a lore hound. You'll have you'll have probably the easy probably the easiest time because it's just one set of lore trading for another set of lore, um, and it's just as deep and just as fucked. If <laughs> if you're if you're somebody who who um focused more on playing the tabletop, 
you might have a bit of a difficult time due to the fact that BattleTech's um BattleTech's scale of co of combat, even even though it is a combined arms um miniatures war game, is vi is not on the same level. Even uh, even a normal non um non apocalypse setup for um for 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 forty k for forty k armies. Would would still involve a substantial amount of units, both both when it comes to soldiers, when it when it comes to when it comes to armor, and and when it and when it comes to heavier things in some cases. And you whereas there are there are two there are two methods with um, BattleTech that you can run, and both of them are both of them are relatively smaller in scale. Um, the more the most popular version, of course, is classic. Which is just a, which is usually just a four on four or five on f five on five um, setup. Usually with usually with a set of of he of heavily kitted out mechs, instead instead of instead of a standardized setup. Expect a whole lot of customization, even with individual units. Yep. The larger scale, of course, is Alpha Strike. But even uh, with, Alpha Strike. But even with that larger scale. It's lar its larger scale is still smaller than st than a than a two than a two thousand point army for um forty k. And there is and of course and even and of course even with this there isn't any equivalent to say apocalypse because that because that would be that would be completely redundant. Um, it would just be an Atlas scout troop going after a fucking uh planet. <laughs> Don't don't you mean don't you don't you, we don't have to bring it's a little too early to bring in Steiner Scout Squad here. No, no, it's not. And I was trying to be I was trying to be not completely referential to House Steiner here, but okay, yes, the Steiner Scout Squad. <laughs> That's an apocalypse rule. <laughs> but um, and you, now and yes, there are a lot there are a lot of various mechs and a lot of of variants with it within those mechs. Given the, given the given the amount of history that you're de that you're dealing with, which is going which is going to be is going to be overwhelming at first, I will not deny this fact. However, I do th I do think that there are there are a few things that are in your favor. One of these has been the community. Now I can only speak for myself, but the BattleTech end of the of the community has been nothing but supportive. When it comes when it comes to welcoming in what have, what have been referred to as 40k refugees. Yep, there's actually uh, an article that uh, actually Monk pointed out to yeah, me this, on the on the R BattleTech subreddit. This is a bit of a lengthy thing, but 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 I think we I think we can get into some of this. The, on the a there is a pinned thread on the BattleTech subreddit. Called "Dear 40k Refugees: A BattleTech Overview," opening with "Firstly, welcome, and I hope you enjoy your stay." Next, check this out. It's a great glance intro. Tabletop. Now you may be wondering where to go to get into the tabletop itself. The best place to start is the three current box sets: the beginner box, a game of armored combat, and clan invasion, which all have decent availability in most hobby stores. I've gotten mine at Barnes and Noble. The beginner box is the cheapest of the three, but it only comes with two mechs and has a truncated rule set. It's great seeing if you like the basics of the game and introducing new players to the game. Also, it has the Griffin, one of my favorite mechs in Battletech. A game of armored combat comes with six mechs and most of the basic rules. Clan Invasion is an expansion for a game of armored combat, comes with five mechs, two elemental power armor infantry squads, and rules for clan tech. Note Clan Invasion does not have rules for how to play, just the new tech. Thus, you will need either a Game of Armored Combat, the Total, the Total War rulebook, or the Mech Manual rulebook alongside Clan Invasion. More on those later. From a Game of Armored Combat, com there's lots of directions you can take. Catalyst Store has, the, has most of the available printed material in physical and digital forms, and even sometimes has minis in stock. Sometimes. Probably within the next couple weeks. You can also get new minis from IWM, Ares, Ares Games and Miniatures, and Fortress. There's also a large BattleTech aftermarket, like places like Steel Warrior Studios, Hardware Studios, Revelations Mini, 
which also play Double Duty for their own custom game and rule set, and Metalcore collectibles. It should be noted that it's a little difficult to get the Catalyst plastic redesign minis right now. The IWM metal ones and the aftermarket custom 3D printed ones are easily available, but the box sets and Kickstarter minis are scarce. This is because they got stuck in shipping limbo because of COVID and the Suez Can Canal blockage. They should be getting restocked <laughs> around November. Th let me. S this was posted two months. This was posted two months ago. Catalyst ordered hundreds of thousands of force packs and are planning to have another production run, so there should be plenty to go around. You can always check your local hobby store to see to see if they are expecting a shipment. Also, make sure to check Barnes and Noble. I found they often have BattleTech box sets on the shelves in the board game section. As you expand your mini collection, you might want to expand your rules. He puts a quick visual guide um, and a more in-depth description. As previously stated, Clan Invasion provides a basic overview of clan tech. The Total Warfare rulebook is the main rulebooks and gives the rules for playing with units of all sorts. There's also the Battletech Manual, which is great for when you're only playing with mechs, as opposed to combined arms with tanks, infantry, etc. And has the more in-depth rules only otherwise covered in more situational advanced rulebooks. It's also a great quick reference rulebook. You can also get Alpha Strike. This is a more streamlined rule set made for more modern sensibilities. It's less clunky, allows you to play faster and larger games, but you lose some of the glorious feel of having your mech blasted apart ar around you as you desperately try to disable your opponent before he can do the same to you. Personally, it's not my cup of tea, but I've, no but I've been known to drink coffee when I'm in the mood. I like that there. I'd imagine you 40 cares might enjoy it more, at least at first. There's also some RPGs. These are A Time of War and Destiny. I've also found Mech Warrior first and second edition PDFs floating around the in internet. Um, bit of an aside, I did review A Time of War a long time ago. Um, I thought it was all right, but it, but I had I had some issues when it came to character creation. Um, Destiny uses Catalyst's um, Q system, and I find it to be um significantly significantly better for those who don't want a don't want as crunchy of an affair anyway video games what's a franchise without a video game these days a sad sack that's what fortunately battletech has plenty i'm not much of an online slash pvp gamer but mech warrior online and mech warrior living legends a sequel that's also a sequel is also in the works are free and plenty like them you can also get mech warrior 5 which i've been loving though i'd highly recommend the dlc in fact, they just recently released another DLC for MechWarrior 5 um, fairly recently. The game's very incomplete without it. You can also get the ba get Battletech, the turn-based game of the same name by Harebrained Schemes, which is also very fun. There's Mega Mech, which is the normal tabletop on your computer. It's also free. Wolves is a fan-made successor to the Mech Assault games. Also, MechWarrior 1 through 4 and the Mech Commander games are all abandonware and can, and can be found. Getting them to work might take a little effort, though. For more information on each of these, and then he links the relevant subreddits, including um, our Mech Warrior, our Mech Warrior 5, our Mech Warrior 5 mods, our Battletech game, and our Battletech mods. Lo As for the lore, oh boy, the lore. Hang on, because Battletech's lore is a deep, is a deep and twisted rabbit hole. Oh, who am I kidding? You lot are Warhammer fans. You can take it. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> to start off I mean with, go ahead. Isn't that why you and I are in both? I mean, I, we, 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 were, we, were, we were Julio, and, uh, and... Oh, God, why do I always forget his name? Ugh, both is good. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Um, to start off with, Sarna is one of the best wikis on the internet. Yes, it is. Miguel. Julio and Miguel, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. It will be your friend in researching the lore of the land. As for official products, they have many source books. The historicals and era reports are the best general overviews. There's also hundreds of fictional novels. If you have any questions, be sure to head over to R the N the Naglaring. I'm pretty sure I apologize for mispronouncing that. The ba the dedicated BattleTech lore subreddit. They have professional librarians in for mods. Naglaring. Naglaring. Um There's also excellent lore community on YouTube. BP Black Pants Legions Text Talks BattleTech, Critical Rockets Lore Warrior series, Farseer Animation Mad no, Cat not that far, Seer. Mm -hmm. Mad Cat 529, Portable Cause, Mage Leader, Lore Reloaded, Bic The Bickering Bunch, The Mighty Pirate, and Grimdark Narrator, and more. Now, in case that's daunting, I'd recommend first watching these videos in order. And he links a couple intros, the Battle Mech and How We Got Here, the Mackie, 
Evolution of Warfare Under the Battle Mech Part 1 and 2, the Rifleman and the Marauder. At, as quick aside, the mech that you're seeing on the screen, that is a Marauder 2. The Ameris Civil War, The Collapse of Star League Part 1 and 2. Lyran Commonwealth, Throw Money at It. Free Worlds League, Capitalism, Ho! Federated Sons, We're the Good Guys, We Swear. Draconis Combine, I Heard You Like Anime. Capellan Federation, Nazbol Weirdos of the Galactic South. And fuck the Capellans. <laughs> <laughs> Rise of the Clans, Exodus to Elementals Part 1 and 2. And what is this two kid everyone's talking about? You can also Remember two kid <laughs> You can also you can also watch one of several overview playlists of some of the I mentioned YouTubers have made. Lastly, community. There are a couple there are there are also a couple of good places to check out if you want to get into Battletech. This subreddit, of course, if you came in here from r slash grimdank, you'll never escape the memes. Behold, da <laughs> dare refuse my patch all. <laughs> <laughs> the OG BT meme sub. Ev everything Battletech and the Battletech forums are great hubs of the community. Master Unit List is a great overview of all the official units in the game and their era availabilities. Flex Sheets is a great stat sheet app for the tabletop. Camel Specs and Unit Color Compendium are both great archives of the regimental color schemes throughout the Inner Sphere. Lastly, and once again, welcome and enjoy your stay. I do, li I do like the, I do like that the first comment I see on here is, "I've never laughed so much at being called a refugee." My favorite part is the one right, right below that. YouTube binge, here I go! And then OP, we won't be seeing him for a while. Uh, next person, six hours later. So what did you think? Remember Tukid! Nice! Bagpipes intensify. <laughs> Remember the Black Watch! Enlists with the Northwind Highlanders. For the Northwind! Necromantic sorcery! Calls his local comm star priest and then sets up a claymore to be to behead the priest with. <laughs> and... I should I should note that the um oh uh, that the whole the whole refuse batshall thing that has been a meme for the longest time because there is there is one particular uh, BattleTech has had a, has had a has had I'd say a significantly better track run when it comes to adapt when it comes to adaptations into other media except for one thing and that is the cartoon the what. <laughs> this was this was this was around that time when USA Network was trying to do cartoon adaptations of any video game they could get their hands on. This brought us such marvelous gems as the Darkstalkers cartoon, the Street Fighter cartoon, the Mega Man cartoon, which honestly isn't that bad for the time. It's probably the best of this batch. And Butaletta, Super Fighting Robot, Butaletta, Mega Man. And um and and last but un but unfortunate, Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm. <laughs> All I would I only recommend the I only recommend adding these to the torture list with Mega Man being the exception. And even with that one, it's certainly it's I only say that it's good for its time because keep keep in mind that even though there's a lot even though there's a lot with the mythos we know now. There was very little to work with in the '90s, and gr granted, so, granted, some of the, some of them have had some mimetic um, va values since, especially M. Bison in the Street Fighter cartoon. But the but the fact is, these weren't very good. The BattleTech one, this, the BattleTech one is no is no exception. And I didn't even get into GI Joe Extreme, and that's as far as I'm going to go with that because I don't like thinking about that particular one. But just just remember that uh, that um, Mega Man, even though you say it's it's good for its time, um, we also had Mega Man Eight. You must defeat Doctor Wall. He destroyed evil energy. Uh, uh, and then, uh, of course, let's not forget that the USA Mega Man cartoon had possibly the best uh, best voice choice ever for Proto Man, Scott McNeil. Yeah, even even though with even though with that thing you had Scott McNeil pulling double duty as both the Proto Man and Doctor Wily, so good so good chunks of, so good chunks of the show were just him in a recording booth by himself. When is that ever? How is that ever different from anything he does? Point taken. <laughs>
<laughs> especially given how many voices he did for the, for some of the Dawn of War expansions. Exactly. <laughs> um, but when it but when it comes to when it comes to the BattleTech one, first off, you had you get, it get we that's where we got the infamous meme of "You dare mock my batch hall." Um, <laughs> but Still always cracks me up. But the thing, the um, but the thing that I find especially funny is, first off, um, um, there, um, there is, there was a, there was a, um, there was a full, a full on, a full on, um, supplement, supplement for the game, ba based, or, based around, based around that cartoon, but secondly, um, the the cartoon was so bad. That it has been used since it has been used since as an in-universe joke that the whole cartoon was pro was a propaganda show. Yes, but was it the propaganda from the inner sphere to say how awesome they are, or was it propaganda from the clan to show how stupid the inner spheres are? <laughs> I don't, I don't We're gonna know. make lore about this lore. <laughs> I don't know about the latter. I mean, have have you seen? Have you? Have you seen the way? Have you seen the way some of them dress? I have. That doesn't make it. That doesn't uh, discount the fact that their that their mech technology tends to still be better in some cases. Look, if look, if you're pissed about us about us making about us making fun of the cartoon, you're probably you're probably you probably stand Clan Jade Falcon because Jade Falcon doesn't like anything. <laughs> Uh, I can only imagine some of the refugees Captain America that I, I recognize. I, 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 I got that reference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but e even with even with that, um, the reason why the reason why I say that there's been that there's been a better track record is um, the the core Mech Warrior um, quartet is still is still pretty is still pretty well regarded. And good of, games, of course. Um, Although, although, although there were some stumbling points when it came to the whole golden mech shit with Mech Warrior Online, at this, um, oddly, oddly enough, when more people ended up the, for the longest until COVID happened, the game was all but dead, and then more people ended up playing it because everybody's just stu everybody's stuck in their houses with fuck all to do, and, inst and um, it ended up it ended up getting a second chance at life, and. Then and then you and of course you have the you have the whole thing with um, the BattleTech game by Her by Harebrained Schemes, which um, was which was so good it ca it caused it it ca it caused Harmony Gold to actually do something for once. Once again, look up the unseen Max, you'll understand then. <laughs> but the thing, but e even even with that, there has there has been. There has been a a lot of a lot of the people who ju who jump in, who have who have made the jump have been have been received fairly fairly positively, and the on, the only real bit of negativity that's happened, and uh, and and anyone and anyone who anyone who partook in this, I hope salt gets poured into your eyes, was when um when Arch was invited as a invited as a guest to talk with Tex of the Black Pants Legion. Um, a man who a man who is the most who is the most wholesome drunkard will will ever meet, <laughs> mm -hmm. and a and a lot of people got ridiculously pissy at te at tax at tax over this. Some of some of whom even some of whom even threatened to um to take away their Patreon money. If you are that fucking petty that somebody you don't like happened. Who is who is from a community during that is tied to this particular exodus? There are you have much bigger problems, much bigger. Mostly because mostly because you're a mostly because you're exactly the kind of people that are forcing people out of the hobby. As I, uh, ironic ironically speaking, this is the type of gatekeeper that I don't endorse. And. When it, but getting but getting back to getting back to the heart of getting back to the heart of the matter um I had mentioned earlier that some people have will have a, will have a trickier time 
I'd say, depending on the depending on your preferred faction in Warhammer 40k, you might have a trickier time. Now, if you're um, if you're say Imperi if you're say Imperium, as as an Imperial Guard or Space Marines or even even um, even um, Mechanicus, I'd say you're going to have a relatively easy time. Especially, especially since you can probably make parallels between between certain mercenary companies and, say, the Titan legions. However, if you if you lean more in the more in the realms of several of the um, Z, several of the Xenos factions, um, and especially the Chaos factions, you're going to have you're going to have a bit of a more difficult time transitioning because. The BattleTech is largely a human drama. You're not going to be dealing with you're not going to be dealing with virtu with pretty much any sort of um, aliens. One could argue clanners, but that's debatable. <laughs> uh, I mean, are they really human? <laughs> um. When and when it comes to when it comes to the like, like when it if you were if you're if you lean towards chaos space marines you're gonna have issues if if you lean towards Eldar um you'd probably get you'd probably fit right along with with um Comstar <laughs> 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 or 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 if you're Dark Elder you'd probably fit right along with the word of Blake <coughs> um but if, but for, but um. If you if you're if you're orcs, you're gonna ha you're probably gonna have a tr you're probably gonna have a trickier time. Maybe maybe one of the bandit kingdoms, but that's a stretch. Um, you're gonna yeah, have a lot. You're gonna have a really tough time if you're t if you ran tyranids. A lot of the space fantasy elements of 40k um, are going to have a little bit of an issue adapting. Yeah. That's not to say that you can't. I want to make that explicitly clear. But ju but just but it's more it's more of a it's more of a case of how easy or how difficult it is to learn a new skill. When a, when you're learning a skill that's tangentially related to a skill that you already have, by nature you're going to have an easier time. I'd say I'd say if there I'd say if there's an, I'd say one of one other thing that you might have that you might have to get used to using is the fact that you're going to be rolling less dice. In no no matter whether or not you're you no matter whether or not you're doing classic or alpha strike, all roads lead to two d six. Yep. As op as opposed to rolling pools of dice and tr and trying to and trying to hit behind hit above target number. No, everything go everything goes on that two d six, which is why. The larger scale alpha strike is significantly simplified compared to classic. Now, even even with even with all, even with all of that, that's not to say that if that, I'd say I'd uh, in an odd way I'd say that the one faction that might have the easiest time transitioning over, unfortunately, is the Tau. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't really refute that. I mean, the sole the sole reason Good Brother Cure you and ended up end up having Tao as his army is because is because is because of the fact that he's a big mech fan. I mean, the Tao aren't bad, especially when you got other things mm -hmm. going for you, but. Yes, um, Tau fans will probably have the easiest time transitioning to BattleTech. Yes. Now, when it when it comes to when when it comes to the when it comes to the game end of things, um, this is this is where thing this is where things are go this is where things are going to get tricky because, um. There, because there's there's really t there's really um two there's really um two av avenues to take whether it be the the turn basedness of um of hair of harebrained battletech which I which I refer to it to um 
for the purposes of simplicity, and um, and the Mech Warrior games. Those are your those are your two main options. One it, one is a one is a sim is a sim is a sim leaning affair, and the other one is um is go is going to be a um tur a turn a turn based skirmish strategy approach. The yeah, the uh, the Mech Warrior games are, are are the sim there, just so everybody knows, mm -hmm. because that's where you're in the mech and you're fighting people. Um, it's fun until you overheat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the I'd I'd say I'd say some I'd say some something else that you might have to consider is that the um doing the bo doing the bonsai doing the bonsai charge which is which is its own phase in 40k is not going to be your best idea much like in say infinity be, ha, ranged weaponry is going to be key that's not to that's not to say that th that there aren't builds that are going to get up close like say the um, default configuration for the awesome, <laughs> or 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 even even um even even Mar even marauders and even marauders have some degree of bl of bludgeoning capacity because of the fact that their the the fact that their guns are are um, overbuilt when it comes to armor, which was bu which was by design. It was yeah, I was gonna say kind of kind kind of by design there. Mm -hmm. And. The, it's one. It's one of those things that you're that you, that is going to take a little bit of getting used to. But given how, but given again that supportiveness of the community and the fact that something like Mega something like Mega Mac, which anybody else would, any other company would probably try and shut down, is actively su actively supported by Catalyst, speaks volumes. And speaking of that, there's a, with the rise of one of the reasons that um, it's speculated. That 40k is trying to get out of the tabletop business is the belief that they cannot compete with the rise, at, with the rising viability of 3D printing. Commer uh, consumer grade 3D printers have gotten insanely cheap. If I find a 3D, a 3D printer that could uh, print a mini of normal size of of, of a normal size Space Marine in uh, 40k, uh. Let's just look real quick on mm -hmm. Amazon bestsellers best three D printers. They're anywhere between two hundred and four hundred dollars plus, you know, the materials for the whatever filament you're going to use, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, that's insanely cheap. Uh, there's hell. There's a three D printer right here that I'm looking at that looks to be advertised with a Hero Forge figure next to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's definitely a Hero Forge figure. Um, that is priced right now on a deal at 560 bucks. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a larger one too. You know, it's seven, uh, seven and a half inches by 4.72 inches by 9.84 inches. That's, that's, that's a larger, uh, consumer grade, uh, 3d printer and can create some pretty large 3d printed items, but to make standard size, uh, Space Marine minis. That's that's plenty of space. Oh yeah. You could go. You could go with something smaller if you really wanted to. Mm -hmm. Um, it's essentially uh, a. It's because of how cheap it has gotten for someone to get a three D printer and get the resin and get the the. Uh, get the filament and get whatever they need, whether it's resin or filament fed. Um, people can start printing their own minis really, really quickly. But the, the funny, th the funny thing about the funny thing about this, about the, about the 3d printing argument is that the solution is, is almost retardedly easy. Sell the STL files. You mean like catalyst does. Speaking speaking of that, I'd want I'd want to bring up something else. Um, Games Workshop has been notoriously anal about what miniatures you can you you can utilize for um for for a fit for a fit for um play. 
It was only through massive fan backlash that they even started allowing Stormforge minis again at one point. Mm-hmm. And then they stopped allowing them again recently, I think. Mostly because I, th I think I think their mindset was, well, people are stop people are not people aren't pissed at us anymore, so let's go back to where to where it was. Maybe they'll have forgotten. Which didn't work. Oh. I mean, <laughs> obviously, because you're you're um you're de you're dealing with the hardest of the hardcore. Yeah. But but uh, go ahead, Mark. But um, comparatively. Um, now Nantic or Nantic already has a as a policy like this with their Kings of War game, but um, but Catalyst has the policy of we don't give a fuck. We give so little of a fuck about this whole you can only use official you can only use our miniatures kind of attitude that we highlight third party we highlight third party manufacturers frequently. And you could you could even you could even use just whatever whatever happens to be at that table, and it'll and we or even fucking cardboard cutouts, we don't care. Monk was telling me about a time he played using empty Zippo covers with labels for the mechs he had. Still counted. Yep. So uh, another upside of BattleTech in that remark is. They just want you to play the fucking game. Mm -hmm. They just want you to play the fucking game. They want you to have fun. They care about their community having fun. Mm -hmm. And that is probably the biggest endorsement I can give any company ever. They care about their community having fun. And if GW could pull their head out of their ass for two seconds and realize that what they're doing works even in the age of 3D printing, GW might be able to backtrack and start earning back fan trust. They won't get it all back immediately, and it won't be anytime soon before they were at the level that they used to be way, way back in the day. Mm -hmm. Though... I am. Um, I'm not holding my breath, and neither should any of you. We'd all suffocate. Yeah, and I um, I do not, I do not endorse that. He's not into that. It's not his kink. No. Um. If look, if look, if look, if I want to, if I want to see choking, I'll just, I'll, I get, I get enough of, I get enough of that just watching sports every week. If you want to see choking, just watch Vince McMahon's productions. <laughs> But, I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? Yes, you did. <laughs> now, I I want to make something clear. Um, this whole th it it could be very much construed that we're that this whole episode is us do is us doing a thing uh, us doing an equivalent of top ten reasons BattleTech is better is better than 40k. That is not our intention. Our intention with this was to exp was to explore the gr the gradual ex the gradual exodus. From uh, from companies that on, that only care, that only care about payers to companies that are caring about players, and eh. I was and I specifically wanted to focus on this one because of, because of recent um, events. But this is not a phenomenon that's unique to Games Workshop in the in this in the last year. At the some at some point we do need to go into the uh, the WoW and FF14 one. Yeah, the, I um when it comes when it comes to that one, I I feel like I, I feel like I need some more expertise on that, which is why I haven't covered it yet. Um, um you you have me, and then I, I I wonder if we could get spoiler in on that one. The the FF14 expertise isn't the issue; it's the WoW expertise that I'd need. Ah, I don't know. I don't know if my my buddy would be willing. I'd have to ask him. Um. My my buddy that I this Twitch channel I follow, um, he's still trying to make affiliate, but he has fun streaming. Yeah. Uh, he played WoW for the longest time. I'll I'll ask him and we'll see. Yeah, keep um, let let me know if the, if if that if that's certainly an option that then then we'll then we'll certainly take it. Um, I will I will note that as a as a corollary one one other one that I one other one that I want to explore is the um, is the um, 
is the phenomena of lapsed WWE fans becoming AD, becoming AEW fans, and the um, <laughs> the um, butthurtness of of some of the WWE diehards in the process. Butthurt WWE fans never. Um. Well, that I was gonna I was gonna bring up the I was gonna bring up the people who the cult the um Jim the Jim Cornette stands in this kind of thing, but fuck him. But when it comes, but getting back, getting back to getting back to this, the this particular kind of this particular kind of exodus, we uh, it, it is no new thing to see someone to see someone leaving a, see see someone leaving a large fa- a large fandom and and moving on to something else. Hell, um, after the whole blitz after the whole blitz chung thing, I I completely swore off anything from Blizzard. And fact, I deleted my Battle.net account. So did I. And in, and in fact, if you go back in my archives, you'll you'll see that I put, that I put up a video hi- <coughs> highlighting alternatives to to certain products. Like yep. Um, as an alter look at i.e. look into things like Smite or or um Paladins as an alter as an alternative. Um, as an alternative to to Heroes of the Storm and Overwatch. There's Way too fucking many um, ARPGs that I could po- that I could point to as an alternative to Diablo. I think you pointed out Grim Dawn specifically in that video. I pointed out I pointed out Grim Dawn and a few others, but that was the one I wanted to focus on at the time because it had the most content. Yeah. Um. And the and um. Of course, and of co- of and when it comes to when it, com- when it comes to WoW, um. I'd say if I do if I do if I do the episode on that something else I want something else I want to bring up is whether is whether or not we're going to be seeing a shift from the MMORPG into the MORPG because as pedantic as this may sound Final Fantasy 14 is not an MMORPG and that's and I don't mean that as an insult because um as much as I love so, fan- as much as I love Fantasy Star Online, that wasn't either. I will say this: in the cities, Final Fantasy is definitely an MMORPG. You can find hundreds of thousands of people there, uh, interacting, creating parties, etc. What I mean by what I mean by that is how is how it's is how its group content, like like raids and instances, are structured. Hmm. Okay, I see what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, they don't have anything along the lines of like the 40, 40 man raids, but they do have twenty four man raids, and they're thinking of going bigger after Endwalker. If they if they end up going bigger after Endwalker, I will um I will retract that statement. I would like if we do that episode on on WoW versus uh WoW versus F, FF fourteen, you know, the Exodus there. Um, I would like to use. Some really fun uh, indicators that I saw recently. That'll that'll be that'll be something interesting to go into. But I think, but to get to get back onto the rails, um, mm-hmm. there's a there are there are a couple um, there are a couple there are a couple there are a couple of codas that I, that I want that I want to go into. Okay. To to the, to um. I want I want to specifically address the respective fa- the respective fan bases. First, when it comes to the Warhammer and 40k fan um, fan base, the people who you for for those who are frustrated, there all there are alternatives. You are not under any obligation to st- to stay with j- with just um with with what with what's been established. Do not fall. I would adv- I would implore you, do not fall into the trap that hap- that I have seen so so many times over the past twenty five years, with pe- with people in um in the in in the case of Dungeons and Dragons or Ma- or Magic the Gathering and Yu Gi Oh, of the of of even though you have problems with the game, still playing it because that's what everyone else plays. That is a that is a dangerous trap to fall into. That what means... we ca- go ahead. I was gonna say what we call that is the sunken cost fallacy. Mm-hmm. Y- you are at 
no obligation to consider everything you've paid into it, everything that you've done with it, all the interaction you have with it, as, well, I've already put this much into it, I might as well continue. No. That is how people get stuck in terrible things. Mm. Do yourself the favor to step back and go, this is doing me no good. This is not doing me I'm not having fun with it anymore. The people here aren't the people I care about anymore. Just step beyond it. Mm -hmm. And write off the costs you paid as what they are. Costs. You paid those. You have the, the, the good memories. You have the good times that you can keep with you. Those are what you pulled from it. You have... You still have all the lore you love in your head and the and your favorite parts. Your favorite things are all going to be there with you. Your favorite games that you've won and lost, you're all going to remember those. Don't let them keep you there. Because happiness should not keep you in a place of despair. Now, with the, with that in with that in mind, to the uh, to the to the diehards, to the to the stand culture kind of people, the the li the lifers the people who are no doubt going to call the likes of uh, the likes of us crybabies to the fucking simps you have no you have no you have absolutely no authority over anyone else's fun the people who are leaving are not st are not stabbing you in the back they are not, they are not by any stretch of the imagination betray betraying what they built up and to think and to think in that mindset is to is to be is a is a very dangerous mindset to have and it is a very toxic mindset to have especially if you want more people to integrate into your particular sect of hop, of the hobby because you catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar also, also even if also if if um if calling people crybabies is 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 your is your first is your first argument you've got bigger problems and we ha and we here in the temple have no respect for you that may that may sound like it's a bit hostile but i have no reason to be i some there are some people who will who will who will preach the whole be kind we do not preach kindness here we preach truth i am comp i am compelled by my vows as the monk to always tell the truth and if that if that truth hurts, that is not my problem. Now, on the other on the other hand, to the to the to the old to the old and older guard of BattleTech who are seeing more and more people coming in, do not be grognards. The you're going you're going to have a lot of people coming in asking a lot of questions to, that to you may seem obvious. And I'm not speaking as some, as some as some old, as some old hat veteran myself. I'm simply speaking as some, as somebody who's observed this kind of thing before. Bring them in, teach them of the teach them of the ways. Tell tell them tell them tell them why the, tell them why the clanners are dirty hippies. Tell them tell them <laughs> tell them why tell them why the most tell them why the most why the most glo why the most glorious mech in mech in the inner sphere looks like a trash can. <laughs> Tell tell them what tell them why you ch tell them why you trust Capellan as far as you can throw them. <laughs> you will have you will ha you will have a much better job keep keeping them in long term by simply by simply help by simply teaching them respectfully what the, what this what this particular hobby ha has has in store for them, and in do in doing so. You'll you'll end up encouraging them to tell all, to tell everyone they know about their experiences, and the, and thus this particular cycle continues. As I said before, you catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. And in my experience, a lot all but all but the most cynical have been t have been taking that approach, and I don't see I don't see any signs that um, Catalyst plans on shit plans on changing. Their future direction to ac to accommodate them. They're more or less th they're more or less staying the course from ev from everything that I've seen. 
I could now, if I'm wrong on that, I um, I I will I will take I will take that into account. But th but this it but that is that is that is the that is that is the way I've I've seen it from my own per, from my own perspective. And of and of course, um, there's there's plenty there's plenty of there's plenty of people doing doing legitimate good doing legitimate good work within the hobby, who are, who I ho who I hope to see continue to do that good work in the future, um. And the o the only th the only I'd say if I'd say if there's any final capstone, it would be that. You're going. You're going to. See, you're going to see people coming in from all from all different walks. Do not. Do not. Um. Do not tell them about what's different as a means to, put as a means to put down what there is. But instead. But instead. Do, but instead do so. Um. Instead. Instead. Tell. Instead. Tell them what, BattleTech has to offer. And you'll get. And you'll go a lot. You'll go a lot more. You'll get a lot more mileage out of them. That that at least at least that's where I, that's where I come from. Did you did you have any, did you have any coda that you wanted to, that you wanted to put on that, Zan? Sure. So, BattleTech guys, you're amazing for giving all of these people the um, the warm welcome that you have over these last few months. Uh, keep that up. That's really all it needs to be. I BattleTech has always been a very welcoming community. Um, you guys have never really disparaged anybody else, except you know within lore because it's funny. <laughs> or just or keep... Harmony Gold because Harmony Gold. Yeah, but that's a meme, monk. Come on now. <laughs> uh, in the end. When when you guys answer those questions, when somebody's like, "Well, I really want to get in the lore," and you point them at Sarna and don't see them for two months, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then they come back and they're flipping the hell out, you know, I I love the fact that you encourage it. Could just continue to do that. There's really, you guys are are you you have your your small amount of grumpy assholes who might be grumpy assholes. But you also call them out, and that's invaluable. So just keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. That's really all I can say. And I'd say I'd say that it, I'd say that is as strong of a coda as it, as any to wrap to wrap up this particular episode of Geek Watch. For for those for those who, for those who call themselves Toku faithful, we'll have we'll have something for you next next week. But until then. On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty and join the watch. Except for you clanners. <laughs>